Hey everyone, welcome back to 3D6 Down the Line. We are continuing with our run through of the exclusive module, unpublished module for the upcoming Dolmenwood TTRPG to be released in 2024 called The Red Caps Cauldron. We are in part three of our run through of this short little adventure, and we will see how far they get this time around. My name is John, I am the referee for the evening, and going around the horn, we have. Hi, I'm Mike. I'm playing Friar or Brother. Giants do good. Normally we would have David playing Sir Crump Walder, the Bregle Knight, but he is dead to us tonight, so moving on. Uh, hi, I'm Matt. I play Grimo Mosfro, the Mosling Bard. <laughs> and I'm Ted, and I'm playing uh, Glansuskew Gwillem. And if you don't have a funny voice, are you even playing a roping game? <laughs> you think so? I beg to differ, but I'll go with it. <laughs> this is the king of funny voices. And your fucking cat. <laughs> Just so you know out there, you don't have to play use funny voices when you play D&D. That's called play acting. All right, so the... We are in the middle of the Red Caps Cauldron just to, to make everyone aware in case this is the first time you're dropping in. I don't know why it would be in the middle of part three, but this is a... <laughs> this is un now and go listen to one and two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I forgot to mention this in the second part, so I want to make sure it's very clear that this is unpublished material. So I know that all of you out there, are, if you're watching, are able to see the PDF that I'm referencing. This is, of course, is just something that Gavin has in the very you know early, early alpha stages, and it'll be all cleaned up and look like the same sort of layout and design as the beautiful Dolmenwood books um, PDFs that we, uh, we are already have here thanks to the kickstarter so just be aware that this right, is a work in progress it is in development as it were um and let's see where we're at right now so going over to the recap here all right so the party at this point their goal was to find for the sage that hired them his the sage's dream of a map of the moon which he has lost they have actually discovered this map of the moon that was hiding in one of the cauldrons within the cauldron, the uh, the cauldron of riches. However, even though they were able to find it using a pewter rod to stir the magical water in that cauldron, they are not able to retrieve it. And they're fairly certain, this is what they've surmised, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you may need the copper rod in addition in order to actually gain the dream. Um, so they are in on the search for that. They have heard that there is another cauldron in here called the Cauldron of Places. They're not entirely sure where it is, but they have a pretty strong inkling. Um, but the the copper rod is the key to getting what they need. On their search for that, they, um, thanks to a very drunk Sir Crump Walder, uh, he caused a little bit of chaos again for the second time, and he's summoned Sir Wello in a fit of rage. Sir Wello, being the gentleman manticore that he is, uh, refrained from too much violence. He, he did slap Sir Walter a little bit, but deservedly, uh, deservedly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, he's the peacekeeper of this place, so he was uh, not happy to hear it. You guys are all should be aware of the fact that it is very, very unlikely that Sir Wella will be so forgiving if any future disturbances happen again. Um, there. Uh, of course, you don't have Sir Crump, so the chance <laughs> you, you have a chance to be a little bit more circumspect. <laughs> um, okay, what else? All right, uh, you guys are right now. You are in. Let's go over to Miro, the map. You guys are where the PC marker is right now. You are in the dreaming room with five silk canopied beds. You've already slept in two of them. Friar Jimes slept in one, where the inscription along the base of the bed um, read. Where is it here? Uh, the pen is not always mightier. And when he rose from his dream, he actually uh, had manifested in his hands a long sword, which he handed over to Sir Gimes, which I'm going to have a question about in just, uh, uh, Sir Gimes, uh, Sir Crump, which I have a question about in a moment. And then Sir Gimes, uh, <laughs> Sir Crump went to sleep in another bed with the inscription, friend to the tongue, foe to the eyes, woke up and had a basket of onions manifested. <laughs> Thus, a friend of the tongue, foe to the eyes. <laughs> Remember, too, that there it's a, a funny sort of mundane basket, but tears, right? Tears are a thing. Um, mm -hmm. So you... Uh, in addition, you at the very end of the session, you had looked uh, northwards where there's an archway uh, leading into another circular chamber, which you have not yet stepped into. But that archway had a peculiar inscription on it that said, Tears of Wakefulness and Dream, Trusty Red and Trixy Green. And then when you peered in with your lantern light into that room, you saw that beyond 
There was a checkerboard floor with two foot squares alternating between red and green. That's all you saw in the dark, uh, you know, darkness beyond. Um, and that's where you are now. So what I'm going to say for Sir Crump is that Sir Crump was so enamored with the quality of sleep that he got in that bed that he's decided to go back into that bed and sleep. And there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Even though he did wake up sober. Can um, we steal so, those onions? Yes. So I need to know, because he had both. What do you do with the basket of onions? And what do you do with the longsword? Well, I actually have a question about those uh, those onions, John. So, so far it's been very clearly established that everything in here that um, is of the dream realm is very colorful, but very ethereal, right? Like there's no yes, hard correct. edges. Correct. Um, as opposed to us, we're real, we're kind of black and white, monochromatic, but Pretty very much. hard edged. Yep. The onions, do they seem dreamlike or do they seem more like us? Dreamlike, definitely dream. Oh, shoot, I was hoping. Same for, thing with uh, the long sword as well. I was hoping for dream onion or for real onions. Damn. No. Um, you have yet to encounter anything real here except for what's been on you. We can always hope. Um, so I think I should take the onions, though. Like, uh, I think we should all have at least one or two, right? Because yeah. we don't know. Sure, let's divvy up the onions. Why not? Yeah, how Just many are there? Uh, there's not a set onion. amount. If just you want the whole sack. basket, that'll yeah. take up a slot. But if you just each want like one onion, I'm not going to make you count it. Okay. Okay. Let's, um, let's all take onions. I, uh, Grimo can, is proficient. I guess he can, he can use a, a long sword. I don't know if you guys, if, take uh, it. Take it. Uh, take can Moslings use long swords? I suppose they uh, probably can. Yeah. They, I just, I just, take, well, I checked, um, uh, Bard. It's under the, uh, yeah. Right. It was under the okay. starting equipment options for them, so I figured that he could use them. Uh, let's see. For Moslings, though, specifically, it must be tailored to Moslings' small size for armor. Uh, da, da, da. Cannot wield large weapons. Okay, so longsword is not large. So, yeah, you're good. Oop. Okay. Okay. It's gonna cool. Be like so, you got the longsword. Right? Hmm? It would be like a great sword for him. I, g <laughs> I guess in looks, yeah. Mighty I mean, Moslings. relatively. Yeah. Well, I look very cool. <laughs> so the, the sword is dreamlike. You can definitely tell it's dream, but um, if it was real, it would look solid and well made, um, but nothing spectacular in it in and of itself. Like you can tell that it's probably not magical, other than the fact that it's made of dream. Okay, uh, which is pretty magical. Uh, and just a couple more uh, quick questions. Uh, can I get a hit point recap from like how many hit points you have versus how many you have max? <laughs> yeah, this won't take long. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Let me I, have I have two. I have, <laughs> I have two or three. Two of three. I have two of four. And I have four of four. Oh, look All at right. you. Friar's the tank. Get up there, Friar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm half dead from five ladlery. <laughs> <laughs> from ladlery, yeah. It's yeah. been your worst enemy so far. Mm -hmm. um, and the last question. Did any, because I can't remember, did any of you take the pewter rod? Uh, we did it. we leave it at the, we left it at the. Yeah, I think thing. we left it there. I lifted yeah. the cauldron. Okay. Uh, I also, when I was re-listening to this episode, I I should have actually inputted like a little bit of flavor whenever um, you were tasked to refill the cauldron when Sir Wello told you to do so. That when you had to march back through from the kitchen through the wine cellar back into the cauldron when you were hauling the ewers of water back and forth, that you would have had to navigate a wine cellar that is completely destroyed almost. Like there's a hundred, yeah. not, not all the wine bottles fell apart, but everything on that rack that moved got thrown off and scattered about and so there's like a, a you know it's it's reeks of wine and there's just a big pool of glass and wine all over that floor at the same time would, so you would have had I, to I navigate that, that i assume sir wella would have made us clean that up too uh they probably would we can yeah, I, I don't think he would have commanded you to but if you wanted to what i would say was i would tack on another um two turns worth of time if you wanted to do that but it's not necessary up to you. I think it's I think worth it, guys, yeah. and I think it's worth it just because then maybe Sir Wello won't immediately eviscerate us the next time we do something stupid. Yeah, it's good, uh, you know a, a little gesture of goodwill. Sure. Okay. So we'll we'll push forward a little bit uh, further ahead. Um, once again, will... in fairy time dilates or contracts depending right. on the whims of fairy. But if you were out in the real world, it would be eleven ten a.m. Be helpful. We'll participate in cleaning up the wine. On the sole condition that he be permitted to curse that damn goat's name the entire time, forcing <laughs> him to do manual labor like this. Is, this well, is so Crump would have would have been helping you at the same time because we were. Well, I would have been needling him every time I walked by. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 
So we'll say that, um, actually, you know what we'll say? We'll say that Sir Crump, instead of waking up sober, actually um, uh, woke up completely drunk and decided to pass out again in the bed. So that's the deal. That's fair. All right. Okay, so you guys are all standing in the room. You've got three beds that you have not tested right. um, or slept in, and you have this mysterious uh, checkered floor to the north through the archway. What would you like what to do? What is this thing to the south? Is this a fireplace, or is this like a... Oh, it's a short a corridor with a door, I think. Correct. Okay. It's just a, It's an open passageway. No door. I didn't, I didn't draw the door. Let me do that. There's no door. Um, There's no yeah, door. So Does the, Wait, you say open passageway. Right. Like it keeps keeps going or it keeps going yeah and if you shine your your lamp you never shine sh shown your oh. lamp down that way um so it goes um uh the passageway goes down for 20 feet and then hitches uh directly to the east all right oh well, that's tight it was your five foot squares right uh five foot squares correct yeah what'd you say mike i said almost as if it's going back towards that other door <gasps> What? Does it go the boar uh, door? Right there, Ted. Yep, you got it. Okay, like so. Yep. Okay, great. Nice. Okay. So, okay. Back so to the what do you do? Warrior, probably. Are we are we doing any more bed shenanigans, guys? I I, I would actually like to do one bit of bed let's, shenanigans. Let's, um, I, I haven't had a nap yet. I could, uh, do you do you want one too? Because uh, sure. you know, Grimo, his um, uh, uh, backstory, his um, uh, background. Excuse me. Pardon me. Is um, uh, he was a swineherd. And well, so shoot. Um, there is a bed here with uh, uh, pigs all over it. Uh, even pigs may fly, I think, was one of the inscriptions on one of the beds. That is the sole inscription on that bed, yes. And, um, yeah, so he um, he would feel that calling, calling to the All right. What cool. are the other two beds? The other two that you haven't tried, there is Loyal If You're Lucky, and then Finest Spirits, Teardrops, and Dreams. I'm going to take a nap in that one. one. That one sounds very elfy. Yeah. Okay. I'm all over it. While they're napping, will... John, mm -hmm. I'm going to go back up to the kitchen. I'm going to fill a bowl with warm water. I'm going to come back. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to put Crump's hand in it. Okay, Crump. <laughs> like, warm water with a hand thing has been a recurring theme. Like yeah. some, somehow it's got to pay <laughs> off. Um, okay, so... Let's see. Okay, so you guys are gonna simultaneously going to go to sleep. This is what something I should have, um, I assume what the answer would be, but I, I missed it when we first played. Um, if you resist the pull of the enchanted slumber once you sort of um, uh, want to sleep, yeah. you do get to make a save. Um, but you guys, uh, Jimes and Crump kind of did it willingly, so I didn't right. even bother. Um, but I'll give you guys this chance. I, you, you guys are willingly doing it, so I assume you don't want to yeah. save, right? Yeah, I want to get in yeah. the big bed. Right, that's what I figured. Just being transparent. Okay, Matt, first, uh, when you go to sleep, first of all, I need to, can you roll me a, um, a, a D4, please? I, I can do that. Uh, that's a two. A two, okay. Uh, that is Grimo. And uh, Ted, if you can do me the same thing. A D4, you said? A D4, yeah. I rolled a two. Two as well? Okay. Yes. All right. All right, so you guys both fall asleep into a deep and sound slumber within Dream itself. Um, okay. The elf has to do the me, 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 me. All right, so you guys are, are happily dreaming. Jimes, you come back with water and perform your little devious little mischief. Um, uh, you do see the caterpillars, uh, Friar Jimes, as you move through the uh, dining room table. They still just sort of look over at you languidly and continue their munching, but uh, you're quiet and discreet and bring your little ewer of warm water. Um, and then, Jimes, would you like to do anything while you're waiting? Um, I'm going to take some of that water and I'm going to bless both uh, Grimo and Glances Q. Willem and uh, maybe give them a little mini baptism into the one tree god. Do you have, you're not, but not, not actually that spell, right? You don't have that memorized, right? Nope. Nope, no, John, okay. it's just for flavor. And okay. uh, I will go peek down that southern corridor while they're sleeping. Okay, so I'm going to say that getting the water and coming back um, is, uh, um, and we'll say we're rolling the blessing too as a turn, okay? Okay. Uh, they, are, they are still asleep, so you take the next turn to kind of peer down there. Do you um, you go down that corridor and kind of peer to the, to the yeah, east? Yeah, I'm just going to go to the corner, and I'm going to duck my head around uh, real quick. And you have the lantern, right? I do. 
15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, so it does uh, it does go for at least another 30 feet from the edge of where you already drew, um, uh, Ted. Like so? Yep. And it continues on. There's no no wall, but uh, but that's where the light ends. And okay. uh, you don't see anything particularly interesting. It's tiled like you would expect, but not in any sort of weird formation or anything like that. Uh, I'm going to continue down the hallway and see... Well, wait, should I just wait for you guys? I should just wait for you guys, right? Ah, go I, ahead. Go knock yourself out, man. Do it. Okay. All right. What's um, the worst that can happen? Character, right? I do. I have another. I have an elf enchanter. <laughs> What's like, your your movement is ninety right now? Uh, my movement is so unencumbered, John. I'm so unencumbered. So one twenty. Um, yeah, it's actually well because we're using the Dolmenwood one. It's in the forty range. Okay, that's one twenty for exploration. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So you keep going until you see something interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, indeed, you um, uh, that that exactly connects up where exactly you thought. You can see there's a little bit of discrepancy with the mapping there, but um, but Ted, it you know it, it lines up with that door. And there, the boar head is not on this side, but with your okay. sense of direction, Friar, you could probably assess what that where that leads. Gotcha. Um, I am going to try and open the door from this side. Uh, okay. So it it opens up without a problem, and you find yourself back in the entrance hall, which is lit, right? Um, with a golden tiled floor that's glimmering and there's like a golden glow that's ambient in the light and um, the tapestry is hanging just as you saw, you know, nothing, nothing's changed. Was it your hat? It was your hat, right? That is on the hat rack? Uh, no, Grimo's. it's my Grimo's Oh, it's Grimo's, hat. okay. Yeah, Grimo's hat is still there. Has it taken okay. root yet or done anything weird like that? Nope. Okay. So, Are you disparaging my hat? I'm we not. I'm seen... suggesting that you have a very, you know, mossy hat that might thrive in a environment such as this okay you're forgiven thank you so we had seen um one of the tapestries turn into a picture of this room right uh you did actually yeah so up in the cauldron room where you were one of them had the purple wolves playing uh what did i say i said playing poker the the right? yeah um and the table they were sitting around had turned into a perfect sort of image of of this exact room yeah i'm going to take the hat off the hat rack place it on the floor in the middle of the room and then going back through the board door, I want to go up through the thing and then go back to the tapestry room. Uh, what tapestry room are we talking about? Uh, the one with the cauldron of treasures. Oh, oh that's way yeah, past the wine cellar and everything. That's you want to go all the way back there? You got you to well, traverse if I have the time, like if, if the guys are still sleeping, then I'm going to do this, John. But I just want to oh, see if the tapestry updates to the hat being in the middle of the room. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I will say this. When you make your way back with that mission in mind and you come back into the bedroom, you mm -hmm. can see both Glanciskew and Grimo are both stretching as they seem to wake simultaneously okay. from their bed at that at that point. You can continue on if you'd like. You can just be like, hold on, check us out. Uh, my soul adventure's over, John. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you but made I an important connection. Just for myself for going oh, yeah. and doing that. Oh, yeah. Noted. <laughs> okay. So... Let's see. Back to um, back to these lazy guys. Oh, it's true. All right. So it's kind of strange, Friar, when you see Grimo sort of emerge from you know he kind of parts the silk, you know, and he kind of comes out, and you see that he doesn't seem to realize that something is attached to his back that kind of floats out after him and sort of parts the curtain. <laughs> and Grimo, you sort of see Friar Jime sort of like looking at you and then he sort of, his eyes sort of go up as he, <laughs> as he looks at something that's behind you. And um, you feel a little bit of a pull as if there's less weight on your feet, as if you're being pulled upward a little bit. You turn around and you see that there is a huge two foot wide spherical balloon that is basically straining um, as it attempts to lift you off the ground. And you feel that <laughs> should you should you launch yourself that you may actually be carried by such a balloon? Huh. This is uh, strange and uh, enlightening. Well, it falls in line with the dreams that you were having, which was very strangely reminiscent of a very famous Pink Floyd album. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I need to say more, at least for, at least for most of our audience, I think, but... <laughs> Um, the and at the same time, turn into searchlights. I'm out of here, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, 
uh, glance askew, whenever you wake up at the same time, yours is a little bit less impressive, but uh, it's still, uh, Friar Gimes, your, your eyes are drawn to what glance askew seems to be unaware that he's sort of cradling in his arms when he pulls out. Um, and he has in his arms a beautiful glinting in your lantern light, crystal decanter. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now that's the, my style. The decanter is empty. But it has, you know, like the, the, the topper is, is pure crystal, you know, picture like a Swarovski sort of, you know, real. There's faceted. definitely a genie in that bitch, and she's probably pretty cute. So let's rub that <laughs> lamp and see what comes out. Or, remember it said, finest spirits, teardrops, and dreams. Mm-hmm. Or we fill it with tears. We eat, rub onions in our eyes and fill the uh, decanter up with tears. What do you say, guys? Ted, I'm you sending have a you a, a wide brain. eye emoji. <laughs> what John? I'm sending you a wide-eyed emoji. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking that's what we do with this. Although uh, there might be something else that needs to cry into it. Also, we should look yeah. at least in the yeah, yeah. Uh, room. There. Yeah, yeah. I think that's has, a good um, point. Has Crump wet himself yet? Oh yes. <laughs> so did you do it just to Crump, or did you do it these guys as well? Just to Crump. Okay, so roll me a d6, and uh, I will say... I don't know if we'll regular s- urine is what we really want in this scenario. Okay. You know? one, or, one or two, he, he wet himself. Oh, Damn! <laughs> Poor David. <laughs> it didn't Poor. work. It didn't work. Okay. <laughs> Regals have very good. strong bladders. Yeah. They, they, yeah. Can we I don't find want to, we, we don't I want to make you a dream. modified roll, though, John, because he drank a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. It's true. Can I find a dream Sharpie? <laughs> a dream Sharpie. <laughs> 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 okay, so what do you guys do? Um, I'm going to pack the decanter carefully in my backpack. So, mm-hmm. and then um, both of those uh, items were dream. Uh, by the way, what's that? Does, does it? Both what, what, items were dream. Just to be clear. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And does, does the decanter have a lid or is it open? It's a glass it's a, it has a uh, an actual stopper, stopper like okay. a crystal stopper. Yeah. Okay. All right, to the north. To the north. I yeah, agree. let's so. check to out the north. Of, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, you're uh, what, what? How are we approaching here? Are we just kind of busting in with the lantern, or well, I'm just going to kind of pick up the mossling and I'm just going to kind of gently waft him into the room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, remember, uh, the red ones are th- are uh, good, and the green ones are tricksy. I think so. trusty red so- and tricksy green. Okay, so indeed, um, as Grimo issues that warning, you can see that you can move through the corridor entering into the circular part where it's not checkerboard, but the moment you're in the circular area, it is decked with with uh, tiles from wall to wall. Um, as your lantern light uh, illuminates, let me see, 5, 10, 15, 20, 20. Yes, yeah, so it's a 30-foot diameter chamber as you, uh, as you already drew, Ted. So the lantern light does illuminate everything. Okay. And you can see that the entire, uh, the most striking feature, of course, is the is the tiles on the ground. There is no other furnishings in the room except for on the northern wall, about five feet high, carved into it is a mournful, uh, made out, carved out of stone, a mournful man in the moon face made out of stone. Very sad, melancholy, right? However, there is a, ve- what looks to be very real, glistening, teardrop on its cheek that's slowly coming down uh you can actually see it like dripping down the side of its stone face good thing there's 30 feet of checkerboard floor from there from where you are to it uh how large are those uh squares is are there are they big or two feet so Mm -hmm. uh, is there um a red one in front of that guy uh no there's a well there's a, a a few Okay, right. so you, you so could conceivably um, stand only on the red in front of this uh, yes. statue mm-hmm. face. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I'm not joking, though. Do we waft you over towards it? No, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking maybe, like, give, give me that decanter. Did we not use one of the beds? No, used them all. I thought there was one we didn't. Yeah. Oh, no, there's one you didn't. You're right, you're right. Yeah, yes. the loyal you did not if use loyal if you're lucky. Yeah. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm wondering if, okay, so it almost feels like we got the decanter to gather the tear. We got the magic sword to do God help us, whatever that would re- require. And then um, we would have to maybe have something else just to, I don't know, like maybe to complete the challenge. Do we need to go sleep in that last bed? Uh, I, I don't know what I, what I'm worried about with that last one is that like some uh, dog or something's going to come out and there's a 50 50 chance that he's going to either try to kill us 
that's or be our I best thought, buddy. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, Ted, you're I, going hard. Look at this. Yeah, look so, at that. Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm definitely willing to take that decanter and you know, like lift off from my tippy toes and kind of float across uh, <laughs> the room. Okay. <laughs> I love it. It's, a, it's an awesome sight because you're like this little stocky little green thing, right? And you're just sort of like, <laughs> yeah, I just like paddle my arms and feet like a dog <laughs> with your bright red balloon behind you. You know what I mean? It's just kind of hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you carefully do not step on the ground at all. And you are floating just like a foot above the ground right in front of the stone face at this point, crystal decanter in front of you. What do you do? Um, yeah, I'm going to uh, uh, say, excuse me, uh, I would very much like to sample your tears. I have a container <laughs> and I hold it, hold it under the, the tear and try to like uh, scoop the contain the tear up in the decanter. OK, so the face does not animate or anything like that. It's still made out of stone. Very, very sad. But yeah, you put your decanter underneath and the tear does indeed actually drip down into the decanter. Um, and as it drips into the decanter and you have it and you can you can verify it's like slowly moving around um, the uh, the eye the stone one of the uh, moon's faces stone eyes produces another tear that sort of squirts out and starts to slowly drip down the side. Uh, no, I don't think like as much as you can. I would yeah, say I don't want to be greedy, but should I? Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I lied. Okay. A another tear does not appear. I'm so sorry. Oh. Um, well, it, I think it might, because I think I might like more than one tear. I'm going to take out my onion, and I'm going to hold it near the um, the eyes of this guy. Not like be yeah. mean and rub it in or anything. Just like you know, hold it under his nose, hold it by his eyes. Okay, so when you do that, tears. the nose animates and scrunches, and the eyes you can actually see start to well with liquid, right? And then one tear actually produces. Sweet. It, pe it peeks out and starts to drip down. Okay, I, I, catch it, I catch it in the decanter. Nice. So you have two tiers. Now, my guess is that it's like a one tier per dream kind of thing. So we might be able to walk out of here with a moon map and three arcane scrolls. Just, uh, you know, that random <laughs> thing I just picked out of that. Says the arcane user <laughs> randomly. <laughs> All right. Do yeah. you guys want to talk? Is my onion used up or can I use it again or do I need another onion? If I want to try uh, you to would get eat, well, it depends. Uh, it, it, it if you, you want full? to try the onion again, is is it a cancer full? No, no, no. It's got two little drops. You know, yeah, you can barely I'm tell if there's anything in there at all. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna, gonna make him cry. I'm gonna try to do it again. I'll, this time I'll like, uh, you know, oh, I have the the sword. I'll cut the cut the onion in half now, and like hold uh, it close to both eyes. You would think that would work. It does not seem to work though with that same onion. Oh, tell okay. him a really sad story. <laughs> tell oh, him a joke. <laughs> I have a sad, sad joke. Here it goes. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> and he just looks We're at, all the, ready. <laughs> at the stone face, waiting for it to respond. All right, I see you need to think about it. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, there is this pig. You <laughs> know, like a, like a pig. <laughs> and he walks into a tavern. That, that's it. That's <laughs> <laughs> because it is amusing because pigs don't normally go into taverns. Are you trying to, are you attempting to do this as a joke or as a tragedy? A comedy or tragedy? <laughs> well, it's a pretty bad joke. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if, it, if, it, uh, if the meaning was to, to elicit a laugh, nothing happens. Okay. Um, it is not. Um, but let's see. Perhaps. I, oh, you know what? I am going to play a very sad tune. There you go. On my violin. Okay. I take out my fiddle and I play a very sad, melancholy tune about this uh, this meadow that uh, uh, dries up and dies. Oh, okay. I love it. All right. So the, the nothing seems to happen at first, but as you really kick into the the, the melancholy strains of the chorus or something like that, the um, you can see that. The, the the sides of its mouth sort of crumple into like a you know a sobbing tone and the eyes start to well up again right um, you hear it taking a deep sniff as if it's trying to snuck, suck back like you know it, you know getting clogged up and then a single tear bink, comes out into the cheek it's Sweet. okay let it out let it all out it's fine <laughs> and I, I catch the third tear collect that one 
And off in the distance, way off in the distance, back into the east, you hear a familiar voice say, I hear those wondrous strains. Remember to visit me in my lair. Oh, of, you know, the fans, right they follow me everywhere. It is, <laughs> it is hard to keep a low profile when you are floating by your pants from a red balloon. No, no more solid truth has ever been spoken. Oh, my goodness. Um, all right, guys. I, I, we have three tiers. Uh, pretty great. Uh, that stopper so, in. Yeah, okay. I'll put the stopper on top. Uh, and I'll, okay. I'll spin around and take a back. look. Like, is there anything <laughs> facing the other way that we couldn't there see is, facing this way? There is not, no. Very nondescript room, except for the checkerboard floor and the moon face. But that's, there's that's no all that's in the room. no on the moon's face or anything like that. Nope. No. Yeah. All right. I will tell the, the guy, I'm sorry I made you cry. Uh, I hope you feel better. And I'll, I'll turn around and, like, kick off from his nose and then dog paddle. Okay. Just Back across the room. The room. <laughs> Excellent. Very good. Right on, man. Um, okay. <clears throat> okay. We'll so say that that get, whole interaction took a turn. Yeah. When we get back over the line, we'll haul him in. Okay. Like, like Zeppelin handlers. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Um, so, uh, we're kind of, we're kind of sure that the, 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 the moon map was in that cauldron we found, right? We don't need to try and find the other cauldron. Uh, we still need to find the rod. We need that rod. other rod. And, yeah. And actually, the, isn't the moon map in the cauldron of places? And we found the cauldron of treasures. Right. So you know that you, we surmised the moon map was in the cauldron of places. I don't think we actually knew that. No. In the last last uh, play session, we saw it. We saw the moon map in the treasure room. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, we still need to find the copper rod. I think we yeah. should go try the onion trick on the kitty cat and see if we can get him to open. Or we can also, you know, where we haven't been is to um, play manticore. with uh, the manticore. I can go uh, true. play to play him a song and ask him if he uh, has ever seen uh, a copper rod or knows where one might be. Come on, guys. I found a shortcut down there. Let's go. Yeah, I say we go to the manticore's place. And, and if, John, if I, correct me if I'm wrong. When we were in the uh, the big dining hall, the far mm -hmm. eastern wall, you said, was a, a, a balustrade. A balustrade that looked over, yeah. So we never went down that way to look over, but how much, can we tell how much more room there was? Yeah, you never looked over. So unfortunately you don't, you don't have any idea. You never actually went into like the Eastern side of that room. Right, but I mean, like if you are standing away from the balustrade, you should, we should have been able to see the far wall though, right? Uh, yeah, that's probably true. Cause yeah, they're both lit. So yeah, that's true. So I'll just give you the far wall dimension. So um, from the edge of the balustrade, Yeah. Uh, below one two three four five uh 25 feet more to the eastern wall of that whatever is down below oops <laughs> so Let's so that again. so from the level where the table is you would look down into another space if we went over to the yeah. edge correct yeah mm -hmm. oh okay. we should uh we should do that you could all, yeah you could you could get a look at the room if before you enter it if you wanted to go back into the dining room that's up to you yeah if he's got a big table full of like people body parts maybe we don't go down there <laughs> no, he's my friend. He's good. Um, <laughs> like yeah, the so, orgy scene in Conan, man. I'm not not going. <laughs> so speaking of uh, the Manticore, what was his name, Sir? Sir Wello. Sir Wello. Sir Wello. Um, I have a I have a, a skill, John, mm -hmm. called uh, Monster Lore. Oh shoot! And I would like uh, I, I can on a five or a six. Uh, it would be counted as a successful check, and I can uh, identify monsters and their basic powers and vulnerabilities based on their appearances in myth and folklore. I'm not looking to like scout out his that stuff so much. I don't want to fight him, but I just want to mm -hmm. learn his deal if I can. Okay, and, sure. Uh, maybe the caterpillars also, but um, mostly him. I'm mostly curious about. Him. Okay, and you have right. So you need a five or six. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Okay. okay. Go for it. I'm a little jealous, man. You're you're like. You can float and play music, and and you can whistle tapestries down, and I can conjure treats. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, life life is tough, huh? <laughs> the true masters of Dolman would. Uh, I do not I know. know anything about manticores, though. I rolled a two. Okay, yeah. Right. So you you've heard stories of manticores, of course, but uh, none that 
are associated with actually being custodians of fairy realms, right? This, this is rather odd. N neither have you uh, ever heard of um, manticores that have violet fur nor wear paisley waistcoats. So um, you can probably confirm merely that this manticore is unique amongst its kind. Let's put it that way. This is right. Okay. Yeah, let's, so, uh, so let's, should we, you want to go to the, the dining room then and look over the balustrade? I think that would be wise. We could see, okay. kind of see what's in there, see what's down, yeah. what's going on. Into the dining room you go. Okay. So retreating back in, let's see. Yeah. So I'm going to say it takes another turn to get to that yeah. far end. Okay. Do the caterpillars um, like to have their ears scratched? Only one way to find out, Glantis Q. Please tell me you do don't that. Don't do it. Don't. <laughs> Just, uh, you know what? Be the, the David. Would Feel the David. Throw through. <laughs> Just uh, make sure you ask oh. for consent, because consent is very hot. <laughs> That's true. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's feeling a little bit like, hey, man, we got the tears. We've I had a good nap. He's going to walk by one of the cats and be like, would you like a little squishy on the head? And if it meows at me, he'll. So you, you ask it first? Yeah. OK, so it, it's in the middle of munching and it sort of looks at you and you see that it's um, its eyes go wide as it tries to take more light in as it looks at you. And you mm -hmm. hear like a low like. Not a purr. Not a purr. Mm, yeah. I'll leave it be. Okay. Yeah. It was, it was good of you to ask first, Ted. Let's put it that way. <laughs> See, <laughs> that's how, that's know how it works, Mr. Fairy. You ask. <laughs> that's right. You got to be polite. Okay. okay. So you move You move over to the balustrade. The balustrade itself is made out of black marble. Um, and... Yeah, so you can see that it, it uh, the balcony itself is 15 feet higher than the floor below. And you can definitely get a look-see at the... Uh, 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 could you? Let's see. 5, 10, 15, 20. Not really, but we'll give it to you because um, the uh, map's almost complete here. So your eastern wall is exactly as I said. Um, it looks like part of the room is underneath the balcony. So be aware of that. Uh, and I'm talking about five oh. feet five feet worth of the room is sort of underneath the balcony, right? So there's like one square that's sort of to the west of the line of the balcony. Gotcha. Right? And then it continues north from the balcony edge for 20 feet. Oh. So not where I drew that line. Uh, no, the, the room itself below uh, continues north for another 20 feet. So it would, it would uh, match that, up that to the wall with the door and it, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then if you just, uh, yeah, you can basically, it's a rectangular from that point on. The only other thing... Uh, uh, map wise here is that to the south there is a 10 foot wide passageway that's in the direct middle of the room that heads south and you could probably anticipate where that probably goes um, but that is an open passageway now the room itself is wood paneled the entire thing arched roof about 25 feet high total so there's what uh, that would be 10 feet more 10 feet higher than where you're standing right now right um there is a checkerboard floor here as well. However, they are one foot squares, so they're half the, si the size of the tiles in the other room, and they are black and white. Right? There are dozens of mirrors on the walls, mm, okay. all different sizes. Um, there is silvery light that is shining from those mirrors and actually giving the room sort of an ambient, rather cold um, light, not warm. Um, uh, shining from the mirrors and reflecting off the wood panels. And you can see that there is on the door to the north, which you should remember what's beyond that door, there oh, is yeah. a smiling brass Bregel face. Oh. Okay. Doesn't, it does not bear resemblance to Sir Crump, though, in case you were wondering. The, uh, the, 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 the mirrors have silver frames as well, and the frames uh, on the top are decorated with faces that are sort of plaintive in nature. Um, and the faces themselves are sort of vaguely human or abstract and like a little bit fairy tale like, you know, like almost like a Brian Froud sort of creatures, you know what I mean, on the, on the top. Um, they, uh, they are leaking tears that sort of fall down the face, and it looks like through carved channels actually reach the frame itself. And sort of track along the frame and down the frame. Actual tears or like stylized? Like it sure looks like real. Like they're you know you see actively like dripping. Water flowing. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, in the midst of this. There's water on the floor then, John? Uh, it's it yeah, but it's not like pooling, right? It's like a very slow sort of drip, and you know, um, and nothing to speak of. Now, in the midst here is Sir Wello, and he is reclining, just in the middle of the room. Doesn't appear to be on any sort of furnishing, so you know what he looks like. And he's just sort of there, um, and he appears to be like asleep. It's actually kind of cute because he's got like a cat sort of sleeping, but with a human face, right? So he's got his face like buried between his paws in the front. Oh, is he doing um, the thing he, where he like does his paw? Yeah, and, there uh, we go. That's oh, perfect. Yeah. yeah. And we'll say too that its wings are sort of folded to sort of encapsulate its body to sort of keep it warm. Um, and then around the room, you see there are a number of musical instruments, harps, cellos, horns, and there appear to be about three, each of them seemingly scattered about the room, placed nicely. Uh, against the walls, um, obviously cared for. And each one of those instruments appears to have a somber face that is carved into them on each one. Huh. So there's a total of, what did I say? So there's nine instruments, three harps, three cellos, and three horns. So, guys, I'm only going to throw this out there because I'm sure you're thinking about it too. Since he's asleep, do we kill him for the XP? <laughs> <laughs> A true gamer. <laughs> you guys are definitely thinking this too, right? Sure. Uh, n- no, you are a monster. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we Something just, tells me we would just like tickle him and wake him up. Do you guys want to rappel over the side of the balustrade or do we go try and figure out the door with the line? I think we should go down. By, by way of uh, the uh, the other corridor. But before we do that, I'm curious, John, is there any evidence of a uh, copper rod leaning against the wall somewhere? Yes. Unfor- unfortunately not. I'm sorry. It's got to be behind the cat, guys. Or under we, that you, you overhang. Have, under, if you we, have, yeah, you have not seen underneath the overhang. but yeah, yeah, if we look, like, how far down does that overhang? Is it just, like, a few feet? Is feet. it? 50, but uh, like how far would we have to go down to peek underneath? Uh, like if we dangled you, off, like would we have to go 10 feet down, five feet down? Like how, it's 15 feet all the way down to the ground. But, yeah, you know how it would be. You'd have to have like someone hold your legs and then you'd have to, you know, swing your swing your top half down so you could look upside down, you I'll know, that it. sort of thing. But I'm, I'm, I'm floaty. Are you still floating? You are floaty. You I'm floaty. Chuck him over the edge and then pop the balloon? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can just like you know use the wall and go down yeah, a little yeah, bit and yeah, peek. No, uh, I mean, we could just this is you know the realm of dreams and fairy and elves. We could play it straight and be like, "Oh, great, mighty Sir Wello, we beg an audience, and may we approach, and we will play you a song, and um, you know that kind of thing." I think mm. I think at this point, Ted, in this instance, um, without having to rely too much on DM Fiat, right? We let him go down there. If Sir Wello wakes up, he could just be like, I'm here for my concert. I'm here to play. Surprise. Here I am to play for you. <laughs> that was pretty good. Thank you. Well, that was good. <laughs> and so we just Love do that. the waistcoat and then of Manticore, up, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, well, that's, that's, you're right. Yeah, just, the Mosling can just play it off legit. And be like, I okay. uh, want to, to serenade you from the sky. And okay. So, Grimo, you're uh, doing this? Yeah, I'll, t- I'll take out the I take out my fiddle, so I'm ready. Uh-huh. If I see him start to stir, I'm ready. <laughs> he doesn't yeah. look like a liar straight off. And then, yeah, just uh, you know, like tie a um, uh, tie a rope so you can help kind of pull me back. I mean, yeah. you could just go okay. out there with the magic sword, like right over his head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be great. <laughs> okay, uh, so you are going to actually attach yourself with a rope. Is that yeah, correct? so you can like pull me back. And then, yeah, okay. I'm just going to try, I'm just going to try to like, you know, scooch down just enough to look under there, under that ledge and see if I see uh, okay. a copper rod or some kind of, you know, something. All right. There. So you quietly sort of launch yourself over the edge and float down a little bit and you look down underneath the, um, excuse me, the overhang. And unfortunately you don't see anything interesting, just another wall. Huh. The, the manticore does not um, wake up. Mike? Can I just say that this is a great time for me to go talk to my kids? Is uh, it almost sure, yeah. the break time? Yeah, if you, we can take a quick break before your interaction with Sir Wello. Yeah. Um, and we, yeah, we, will, we will be right back. Okay, we are back. Bladder's empty, beer's full. Let's kick it. You got a sleeping manicure and a floating mosling in the room. <laughs> and who does it, really? <laughs> yeah, as one does. Yeah, you know, just another, another Sunday night. Okay. Um, 
Uh, so, John, I'd, I'd like to just like, you know, I'm, I'm dangling from my, the seat of my pants held by this balloon. I, I look around um, the, and there are mirrors all over this wall and they've got the faces that are crying from mm -hmm. where I am, from where I'm floating. Are there any um, of these mirrors that that I can tell from here that don't have the tears flowing? Like, are they all uniformly crying or are there any that don't have uh, no, active they, tears? Except for the different um, sizes, everything, they are all equally, like I, I wouldn't say like the, the, the rate at which the tears are flowing are all the same, you know what I mean? But they're okay. all generally seem to be weeping and very, very slowly though, like one small drop at a time, you know? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'll kind of wave at the guys and say, okay, I'm going back up. I'll kind okay. you of know, inch right, my way up. See, we cut right. the rod under there. And it's not uh, hanging on a wall or like used to support a tapestry or decoration in here anywhere. Well, no. the only there's there is a place where there's a tapestry hanging that we haven't checked yet. Yeah, the and front that's room. in the front. Yep. We could go up there. I have an easy way up. Yep. We can look and see if that what's holding the tapestry might be that rod. And Smart. then we could come down the hallway to the manticore again from there. Sure. I think there is uh, something with the tears that we collected and the tears in these mirrors. Yeah. Something's going on. Guys, it's the kitty. We got to go back to the kitty. It's possible, but that's probably where the other cauldron. Oh, one rod in each cauldron. I mm. think it's the kitty. When you, when you just look at the map, right? Uh, um, <laughs> we've missed the one little corridor in the in the first room. We missed the one little bit of corridor from the west. Sorry, from the east. east yep. Leading up to the Manicor's room, we know that that the other room is like the big stone guy. Sorry, yeah. the big like suit of armor. I don't yeah. remember. Was there anything else in that room? It was just wood panels, no. right? Yeah. No, there's a bunch. Th those were portraits. There were portraits in that one. Right. And each each of them showed the Duke who cherishes dreams in some sort of ridiculous pose or in a di ridiculous place. Right. right. I, it's got to be the kitty, but we haven't found anything that gives us any kind of a clue about getting past the kitty. You did have. We search all the drawers. Oh, what did we? What did you, we miss? You know what it likes. Yeah, we know it, it likes, likes solid, solid food. food. And a, a recent development. Onions. Should, oh. <laughs> Hey. It, it, need, it needs real food. Everything in here is dream, yet. We are real. The moss, crump is real. In he goes. I'm on a feet. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we doing? Are you going to do your concert here, or are, you moving, or are we moving out of this? Uh, should I, should uh, I wake him up and ask him? No, no. Let's, let's try for the cat room first. Let's try for the cat room. We'll go back there. But no, for, well, right. first we'll go check that tapestry. Why not? Might be there. Yeah, that, that's, that, that. yeah the tapestry can't kill us, at least. So the, you're, going the, down to, you're going down to the southern door into the back end of the entrance hall is what I'm hearing? Yeah. Is that yeah, right? Because that's that's okay. so close and it's you easier to check. Yeah. Okay. So the caterpillars languidly look at you as you move uh, past them again and uh, you move through uh, that that uh, door to the south. And I offer the, I offer them some uh, some more parsley if they would like it on the way. <laughs> they don't respond. Oh, but okay. uh, yeah, okay. you enter in, back in uh, Friar Giants was just here just a, a short time ago, yeah. but uh, yeah, there's the golden tiled floor dome ceiling the wooden hat stand is right in front of you i believe friar didn't you take the hat back i put it in the middle of the room okay yeah so it is still there so it's it's actually hanging underneath the tapestry right now all right and the tapestry itself has one side depicting a man in the moon weeping teardrops onto an open eye and the other depicts him weeping teardrops onto a closed eye man in the moon The man the moon depicted uh, is a r relatively similar appearance to the stone face that you saw up in the northwest. Tears okay. dripping onto like from his face onto an eye below him. Yes, yeah. An open eye it, and a closed eye. It's not an animation, right? It's like a depiction yeah, yeah. on a tapestry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Yeah. So oh, one side is an open one eye, ears? one side is a closed eye. What if we take one of his ears and smear it in our eyeball? Maybe we'll be able to see things the way they are, or something. Oh, I put. Put a teardrop in her eye. Oh, ho, ho, ho. maybe that's cool. Uh, first, this is 
This is easy though. First, I want to just I want to try to float up, and I want to look at the what's hanging the the tapestry. tapestry. Okay, so it's just basically attached uh, to a wooden beam on the ceiling. No, no okay. copper rod, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. That would have been so easy. Yeah. Too um, easy. Too easy. Hmm. So um, and to be clear to too, that. like the pewter rod is more like a. It, it, it was. Uh, it's a rod, but it's also shaped in a manner. That it's like a. You know, it's meant to be stirring a cauldron. It's like a big like a ladle, spoon. A paddle. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Not okay. easily disguised for hanging tapestries, you mean? Correct, yeah. Yeah, okay. Although you probably, you probably, it, it could have been. I mean, it was definitely a good idea to check, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah, let's go Is back it, up to the kitchen. And nothing of note when I get real close to the tapestry like that. I don't see anything of note uh, as I as I kind of float up. No. Because I'm really close to it now, whereas before we were far away. Right. Yeah. No, you're not getting any, uh, any weird. And, and the hat stand new. isn't hiding a copper rod either. Uh, no, it is not. No yeah, good okay. question. I want to say that sort of, uh, Grimo, you were sort of interacting down there in the, uh, lair and then coming back here, took a turn. Yeah. Um, it is now, uh, noon if, uh, in the, in the outside world. Okay. Um, wonder if the caterpillars could be, uh, induced to lead us to the, copper rod somehow maybe uh, I oh think, john can i, I, think I, think can I do the overthinking this guys i think we're in yeah. danger of obviously uh, we are I, I think we crossed that line so far yeah <laughs> so far ago. so long <laughs> um, all right let's, can let's I, come back to the kitchen then oh yeah and on, on the way john can i do another um monster lore rule on, uh, roll on those uh caterpillars on the caterpillar sure sure why not right why not, why not? it's quick it's just right here. I'm just going to bang out a quick little five or six. Here we go. Or another two. Uh, yeah. these, these creatures of dreams are beyond your Ken Grimo. Uh, dang it. I will, I I will offer one of the cats a treat that I will conjure. Not okay. Sure. Yeah. So uh, do you proffer it sort of like a like you want to, them to eat it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one, it kind of it, it, it kind of growls a little bit underneath because it's it's wary of you and what you've done before um, as a group. Um, but yeah. it's slowly, like, watching you the entire time sort of leans forward and slurps it up. It know, is, it. according to the spell, or the glamour, I should say, its mm -hmm. favorite thing, whatever it is. Oh, okay, yeah. So it yeah. is still skeptical, but then once it kind of gets a taste, it's it devours it quickly, uh, whatever it might be, catnip. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, yeah probably catnip or something, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Back to the kitchen. Did you want to ask it anything? No. No, I just wanted to give it a treat. To <laughs> it well. They're all still there. You killed two, right? So I guess there would be five caterpillars now. Um, and, yeah. yeah I, I feel know. real bad about it. <laughs> back, the to royal. The, back to the kitchen. Yeah. Back to the kitchen. Okay, so you cross uh, through the dining hall, back into the kitchen. The utensils are still flying around preparing food sounds and smells and all that kind of good stuff and you see that the cat faces is, is leering at you from across the distance you're positive that it's mocking you and your inability to access the room beyond <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so um is it possible john can i float up across the ceiling and over and avoid death by spoons or um, would I still be dangling in spoon zone? No, I think, yeah, yeah. If you go up all the way up to the ceiling, yeah, you probably avoid it. Yeah. Nice. All right. All right. So John, I can I go. Want to go uh, John, I want to go get the tapestry that Grimo took off the wall. It's and I'm still gonna in wrap, the room. Yeah, I'm going to go get it. And I'm going to wrap myself in it as protection against the, <laughs> the spoons. Okay. Um, uh, protection against the spoons. Okay. Wait, the, the tapestry? Okay, yeah. I mean, eh, I don't know if you could really... It's a big, heavy know. tapestry. Yeah. Exactly. It's still, yeah, it could still probably hurt you. I got a strength um, of five, bro. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> how, wait, how does that help? <laughs> okay, so uh, if you're going to move uh, through the wine cellar mess, and you can decide not to do this, Friar, if you don't want clean to, you can, easily, you can easily see the danger. Oh, you cleaned it up. You cleaned it oh, up. Yeah, Never right. mind. Never mind. You can I certainly do that. Wait, um, so if you want to wrap yourself in that tapestry, you certainly can. Yes. I'm going to give it the old college try. Okay. All right. You, you look faintly ridiculous, but yeah. yes. 
What else is new? Well, uh, let, let me uh, let me ask this. Okay, so we're going to go over to the cat. Do you have something in mind to give it? A Rub onions in his face. Onions. I whatever John was hinting at, I've totally missed. <laughs> 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 what he's talking about. <laughs> John's what? obviously smarter than all of us put together. <laughs> well, yeah, he, Ted, he Ted actually book. spoke the solution, although he didn't know he was speaking it. Uh, Ted, say, say everything that you said before. <laughs> Onions, uh, treats, um, putting crump in there. Uh, you attempted you attempted dream food, right, from the kitchen. Didn't yeah. want that. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. The and Loves uh, our rations. Yeah, and it loves your very real rations. And it, it told you straight up, like, the only time it spoke was, like, you know, I, I, I want real food. Yeah, we've already given it, like, six. Did we give mm-hmm. it six or did we give it four? How six. many have we given it? Oh, both of Mike's, both of mine, and both of, some, both of David's. Why don't we steal crumps while he's sleeping and give it, that we can that, give him that, two more? That is David. You're the only one left with any rations. No, I gave, him, I gave mine. And then David has his. Oh, then David does has his. Okay, I yeah, thought we yeah, did. Let's go to David's before we go. And into it's the so kitchen. frustrating because you're in a room that is just filled to the brim with delicious victuals and provender, and the room beyond that is a huge spread of, you know, rich food that the caterpillars are devouring. Yeah, and none real. of the food that the caterpillars are eating looks real to us. It all looks like dream, yet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it hurts my soul. Yeah, we put like a tear or something on it. Wasn't the what was the rhyme on the bed? What was the rhyme on the bed? It was something about like use a tear to turn the dream into something real, and then the the Ted bed. The Ted, you know, I don't remember Ted now. Uh, the finest spirits. Ted, yeah, what was it? F- wait, wait, Ted got a crystal decanter that said "finest spirits, teardrops, and dreams." Picking up on that, Grimo collected. Uh, tears from the man on the moon face into his crystal decanter. Let's try putting a tear from the de- crystal decanter on something really tasty, like something that that kitty cat would really like. A plate of sausages. Yeah, or some ribs or something. Okay, oh, do you do that, Friar? Well, Grimo, you've got the decanter. Sure. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll take it out. Okay, what do we want to? What do we want to pour this on for the kitty cat? Nothing on the caterpillars table because they're assholes. So something in here in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> What's okay, so something in the kitchen? Yeah, let's go. Let's, so let's go in the kitchen uh, uh-huh. and look around for see if there's see if there's some dream food. Oh, we've got the onions. I guess maybe there are there's something tons better. of there's tons of food being prepped. It's the kitchen. Something nice and oh. meaty, John. Something nice and meaty. Okay. Let's okay. So let's go in the kitchen. I'll do that. I'll float over and feed it that that food. Okay, so well, you're gonna hang by the ceiling so you don't get hit by the stuff and try to and try to aim a drip. A, a tear onto food? Is that what you're attempting to do? Or Aren't would you, you like to be ve- very sure that you're going to hit the food, but ch- stand a chance of being hit by the utensils? No, I, I, I will take the chance of getting hit by the utensils. So oh, yeah, yeah, you, you grab right the now. food, bring it to me, then I'll go over nice and safe. Okay. Yep. Okay, so uh, kitchen here. Give me a second. Death by spoon. Spoon! <laughs> spoon! <laughs> okay, roll me a d6, please, Mike. You don't want a one or two. All right. Everyone's dice are rolling. Out. Wow. Okay. All right. I don't want to roll a one or two. Correct. Take a four. Uh, a four. All right. You're able to nimbly dodge in between all the flying utensils, and you're able to grab a, you want a bowl of sausages? We, we can do that. Yes. Big, giant okay. bowl of sausages. Yeah. So they That's are right. bright and colorful, but the edges of them are, are hazy and uh, indistinct. All right. And I will I will take the, uh, the decanter, take the lid off, and... Or just a one, just a drop, one drop, one, one drop. drop onto the sausages. Okay, as yeah. the tear hits the sausages, the sausages edges become vividly clear, but all the color desaturates out of them. Yes. Oh, that's good. Okay, that's good. Do they smell? Do they smell real? They still smell the same. Yeah. Okay. Real. Dude, okay. Awesome. Real. Okay. So, now wait. Before you, you throw it in the cat's mouth, we got to say something like you know. If you open, we'll give you sausages. Or when you get these, you have to open or something. See, we can tell it to open. Okay. We want you to open and uh, uh, maybe please have a rot. Got it. I'm so right. hungry. Please, more food. What's uh, that yeah. there? I have some. I'll take some of that. 
You know, it's creepier when you're close. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see what, uh, across the room, I see what you were saying before. <laughs> All right, cat, I've got food for you. Please uh, open wide and reveal to us your secrets, particularly okay. if you have a rod. And, uh, you know, the freedoms. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, it, it opens its mouth wide, and you throw the sausages in, and it, it, it eats them up. It's like, nom, nom, delicious. Please welcome. And it opens up its mouth into like a huge, gaping, you know, like distending, like snake-like, you know, uh, opening. So it's a, well, you can just like walk straight into the room oh. beyond. I well wave done. the guys over, thumbs up, and I go inside the cat mouth. I. I shriek, cover my head with the tapestry, and run through the room. <laughs> you already made uh, it through. That's how you brought the sausages to him. I don't know. I'm the one okay. who's on the wrong side of the, the ladles. Death by ladle. Right. So, yeah, Grimo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Glance, you're the only one that needs to actually navigate. Okay. Right. So, yeah. You want my tapestry? <laughs> <laughs> it's good. He guarantees uh, it. It's gold, Jared. It's gold. I, I just out of curiosity, I'm gonna. I don't think it'll work, but uh, uh, I can just picture it so quickly. <laughs> <You're a weirdo. laughs> okay, do you do you uh, heave the tapestry across the room to glance? all five of my strengths, John? I just blow it and it just lands right at my just feet. Right it's like at two your feet, feet rolled up. <laughs> Yeah, no. We'll uh, we'll say that fire. If if you want to take fire's uh, tapestry, you can you can attempt to do that. Yeah. Did it actually appear to do anything? He still had to uh, roll. Yeah, he still had to roll. Yeah, it did not appear to do anything. But. <laughs> it, 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 it made me look ridiculous. I, I'm I'm an elf, not a foolish mortal. I will stride through the uh, the um, the flying utensils, but this time I'm going to do it properly, like Legolas style. Okay. Right? And so just, you know, nimbly uh, sure. not not playing yeah. dodge spoon. Yeah. I'm, right I'm, okay. I'm definitely dodging all the spoons. I just, I dodge them all, John. Oh, is that right? Okay, good. I do. <laughs> Player fiat this time around. Is that what well, you're okay. I mean, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, two and six, please. <laughs> uh, how many, how many hit points are you crossing this room with there, Ted? I have two. Oh, that's, okay. that's plenty. I am one more than you need. Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 so, Ted rolled a two. So uh, you uh, you you attempt to nimbly leg loss your way through, but uh, unfortunately, a, a, a quite it, large butter afraid. churn basically side uh, clotheslines you on your, <laughs> on your way over, and you take one point of damage. Oh, <laughs> crap. Amazing. I love that the like the, the dire threat in this you know, domain, <laughs> in this module is the it's ladles flying. Ladles. What okay. I love is that Ted lives here now. <laughs> <laughs> He's never crossing that room. Yeah, I can't, never I can't leave. <coughs> I have to live um, on conjuring treats for myself once a day. <laughs> okay, so uh, despite getting thwacked by the utensil, you have uh, all managed to reach the door. So at this point, the, the cat has... It almost doesn't look like a cat. Like it's reared its mouth so far open that it's um that it looks like a full doorway, basically. Now we're gonna go find Matt's uh, room full of cats. No. <laughs> you got to keep them somewhere. They'll get. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and it is actually a door. I should say it's not a doorway. So it actually exposes in its throat uh, mm -hmm. what appears to be a, ma a magically a, a, a door magically appeared in that space. That's close. Oh, so you can't can you, you can't see the rapper? chamber beyond. Okay. Oh well, I would have I would have uh, uh, opened it up so we could go in. Okay. Yeah. Do, do we find right. your rations? Uh, you do not find your rations. Okay. <laughs> beyond uh, beyond there is, as you probably anticipated, there is a uh, another thirty foot diameter circular chamber. Um, and as you can tell, sort of by the the, the slight um disparity in the ch in the uh, in the map here that. The three circular chambers all basically line up, right across. Um, that's the that's the idea. But um, nice actually, job, me, Ted. Still, I blame, a very, uh, I blame the person giving me directions because I'm yeah. sure I wrote down exactly what he said. You're probably right. I'll take the blame for that one. But yeah, thirty foot diameter um, room, and that room itself is also tiled. It is uh, tiled with golden and golden green 
tiles on the floor. Not alternating, but the, all the tiles are, go, are golden green. Um, it is dark. There is a domed ceiling, so it's being lit by your lantern light, uh, Friar. Domed ceiling with wooden beams, and indeed, standing in the midst of the room is a large black cauldron. With shimmering, yes. shimmering water, there are grinning face engravings around the base, similar to the other one. And lo and behold, resting along that, uh, so alongside that cauldron is indeed a three-foot-long copper rod. Any tapestries? Yes. No tapestries. And there is nothing else in the room, and there are no other egresses that you can see. Uh, throwing caution to the wind, John, because nothing can hurt me now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to walk right up to the cauldron and peer inside of it. Okay, so you do so. Nothing uh, untoward happens, so your gut instinct was right. There is, uh, you're looking, in the, you're not investigating the rod, you're just looking at the cauldron, right? Yeah, I just want to look in the cauldron first. Okay, cool. So, what you see, as you look into the cauldron, mirror Galadriel style, same sort of thing, water's close to the, close to the lip there, is you see a perfect picture of a place that you have been before, a large room with maroon shag carpet and five silk canopy beds. It's and in one of the beds, you can see a cloven hoof that is sort hmm. of dangling from one <laughs> end of it. <laughs> Has he peed his pants yet? <laughs> yeah, there's a, a spreading stain. <laughs> 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 Okay, Ted, that is, you know, it's amazing that you can freehand draw a cauldron and a copper rod <laughs> on Miro. And yet. <laughs> I'm Miro. That's like yeah. amazing. And yet, I can't live through ladles. Yeah. <laughs> well, we all have uh, our you know, what, what, what I wonder is if we can stir this until we get to the other, the other cauldron room so you don't die by spoons going back out. Well, let this me ask may be this, though, like a like, teleport thing. Yeah, John, I'm going to take the copper. I'll take the copper paddle thing, and I'm going to put it into. Is there water in the cauldron? Oh, there's water. Yeah, that's what you're. Yeah, which is that's what you're looking at. I'm yeah. going to stick it in there and see if I can jostle Crump's leg with the end of the paddle. Uh, with the copper rod. Yeah. Okay, so you. You stick it in there, and when you when you do, a different effect occurs than what happened with the other cauldron with the pewter rod. Remember, when you stir with the pewter rod, it changed the mm -hmm. scene, right? This one, the water mm. uh, sparkles. Like, it's like a bright sparkles that kind of, and you guys can see from a distance, um, as you're kind of watching Fire interact with it, that his face sort of is lit by all these sparkles, like, coming up out of the water. But, this, but the scene does not change, and you do not seem to be interacting at all with... Um, the copper rod does not seem to have any effect, like in that scene. Jump in! Oh, yeah, jump in! We'll we'll jump back to the bedroom. Why not, uh, John? First, I take off my silk uh, smoking jacket and trousers. Oh, I forgot you were in the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I fold sure. them neatly, put them back in my pack, okay. and then I put on kind of my wet, damp fryer clothes, and then I go head first into the cauldron. Okay. All right. So you oh, see, fryer just smart going right. Yeah, it's sparkling. Yeah, it's still sparkling. And uh, yeah, so you you uh, you dive in head first. You guys all see him, um, and it, you could definitely tell a magical effect occurs. It's not like it looks natural, like he's dipping himself into water. Like the water, for first thing, the water is not displaced by his body, so no water actually spills out. Um, right. And so he just sort of disappears. After he disappears, the water ceases to sparkle. He's just gone. Fire I'll jumps. Go and, I'll go up and look in the water. Friar Gimes, you are, um, you have, uh, as you anticipated, you have uh, instantly transported and you are standing in the midst of the shag carpet room and you can hear that languid snoring that's sort of ever present, but you could right. also hear the snores of um, a, a certain Briggle Knight. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what do the rest of you guys do? Uh, well, I'm thinking that there's no way to get the floating balloon butt Briggle or a mossling into the <laughs> he's not gonna i can gonna i can, I can go down there it's fine i can adjust my i just you yeah know, you, you are not permanent you, you can actually control this grimo so oh, okay. you can he he's can not walk if he wants to. he's not no hey, you, you go like this to go down and you go like this to go up. and the thing okay. is sort of tied to you with like a string like a kid's balloon 
So you can just yeah. untie that. Like nothing. The, it's not oh, like okay. the, the, yeah. the, the image also. The image that I have is of uh, Eeyore flying with the balloons. hundred percent. Just like Eeyore, to his yeah. ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The activation <laughs> phrase is we all float down here. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, see, that took it to a bad place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. that that's what funny. I do. It's now like I like it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so um, here, right, here's what I here's what I'm thinking. Like I'm worried. I want to make sure that we can take this rod uh, with, with us. us yeah. Right. You. I think you should go first. Yes. I'll go last, holding on to the rod, and that way, if like doesn't work or something, I can I can fly out and avoid the yeah. spoons. Because if you get stuck here, you're. If they whack me again, I'm a dead yeah. elf. Yeah, five hundred years I live, but no, going to die by the in the dream. Okay, so who, who's taking the copper rod? Well, I'm going to jump in next and hopefully appear next to Friar Gimes. Without the rod, though. Without the rod, then okay. I'll take and, the rod last. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that occurs. You do all that, and um, w just as you thought, all of you arrive in the dreaming chamber with the beds, um, and Grimo, you still have the copper rod. Everything oh, works great. exactly as you intended. Guys, we're like ninety percent there. I'm going right. to mark off a turn. So it occurs to me, though, that we still will have to traverse the, the ladles to get to the wine cellar. Yes. But luckily, we have my tapestry. It didn't do anything. That Guys, one. I'm just going to go turn out one more light, and then I'm done, and I will uh, come back down. Okay, so I'll be okay. right back. Don't, don't okay. stop for me. Okay. So my suggestion then, uh, Matt, is that you guys go and use the rods in the cauldron of riches to get the uh the moon map and i can go try and distract the manticore um another or, I, I like it i'm i'm yeah. down with doing that for sure another thing we could do is just i could go play a song for the manticore and ask him if he would please escort us through the the danger room. We want to go check our work and make sure that the uh, uh, the cauldron is okay and that we did see if see if he'll just walk us through. Maybe he will. Right, but we'll be holding a great big copper rod that he's going to know what it is. Mm. Okay, this is true. Yeah. Now, I mean, brother, friar, father, priest, man could take it and go in the back way while we go around the front way, but he. You hear oh, I'm coming dying. I mean, it's, you know, you hear coming from the dining room, like to yeah. the east. Mm -hmm. You hear, uh, um, uh, how does every, how is everything going here, my pretties? Enjoying the provender? Have we seen any sign of our friends? To the west, you say. Ah, oh, well, let's see what's going on. Row. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you're if you're staying there, you can hear the um, is it a door? I can't tell by your map. Let me check mine. Yeah, so you can hear the door to the east um, open. Um, Gentle well, I can, fellows, are I you grab, here? Grab the copper rod, lay it on a bed, and lay down on the bed to hide the. Or no, put it under the put it under a bed where you can't see well, it. I'll just put it under and a also, bed. Are, is okay. is the rod small enough so they can go in a, a pack and not be? Visible it's or, three uh, foot. It's three foot long, so it could probably fit in your backpack. Yeah, it could I could fit. Hang it under my my robes, probably. Yeah, yeah. Like I think mm -hmm. we I think we could disguise this. Yeah. Um, I am. Uh, so yeah, Grima would see him come in. Uh, I am glad to see that you are awake. I have been wanting to uh, serenade you. So it swings its like leonine head, you know, kind of in your direction. It's like gish, gish, sort of crawls in on all fours. Um, and I, I greatly desire a concert from you. I have so many instruments down in my lair. How uh, does everything what? go? Have you been disturbing anything, my my oh. trouble finding friends? Where is where is the drunk Bregel? We put him to bed, sir. <laughs> ah, <laughs> a wise careful, move. Very careful, sir. We should all be very, very quiet then, I should think. I think it would be very hard to wake him up. <laughs> Shall we adjourn to my lair? Or will you meet me at another time? I could always take another nap. Um, hmm. let's, let's go. Maybe we can earn a favor out of him and he will take us to the cauldron. 
Yeah, let's go check. Why not? We can check out and see what, you know. And uh, I will tell him, you know, we did see over the balustrade. You have a beautiful set of mirrors. Why, thank your... you. You are the most polite out of everyone. Mm. It like is you a, a gift. Lot. <laughs> Very well. Well, you have an interesting contraption on your back, but regardless, I'm not going to ask where you chanced upon it. I shall retire to my lair. You will have to go the long way, I'm afraid. But I shall see you there soon. We'll do it. Okay, Is so it, he, go, he you... goes back directly east. And uh -huh. I assume you guys are going to circle around through the entrance chamber? Yeah, let's go that way. Why not? Okay. So I'm going to say it's a two-turn journey to get to the entrance chamber. To, you know, all the way through there. Uh, don't mind me. Low, low, low. So okay. Mike, so, uh, he he woke up. He came in and saw us in the the bedroom. So uh, we hid the rod. I think uh, uh, my skirt. Glanceskew has it. Right. I have, so as um, you move through the entrance chamber, um, you do have to access the um, the lion door for the first time, the eastern door. And touching oh. the face, it, it's it's cries. And again, once again, says hall is it hall of mirrors as it as it cries. Oh, that um, says mirrors. I thought I wrote murders. <laughs> I was like, why are we going <laughs> Much I more dire. to go oh, in there. What a relief. <laughs> All those mirrors. Yeah, let's, let's totally go that way. That's let's zoom in. Way. Let's zoom in for the uh, for the people down there. That Cold does look murders. like murders. Yeah. I can definitely see it. <laughs> I'll try and pick that. Red rum. Oh. Red rum. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Red. Okay, so yeah, you so you open up that door and uh, as you now have solved the mystery of what the lion was actually sobbing about. Uh, you know that it does indeed lead to the Hall of Mirrors. And all of you enter into the uh, Manticore's lair and is as I described before with all of the mirrors weeping. We just and went all the, the instruments boss, that, like, guys. So there's three harps. Uh, what did I say? Three harps, the uh, three horns, and three... What did I say? Um, cellos. So cellos would probably be what you, I would say, Grimo, that as a musician, you could probably be proficient in all of them, although the cello would probably be what you would be the best at being um, a violinist. Yeah, I, I think that, um, well, as as a uh, minstrel, yeah, I, class items, they're either strings or wind, right? So either the, the ah, cello okay. or the other one. And, and I Or the believe, harp, you could do the harp too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a string and, instrument. That's true. Uh, yeah, and I believe as a... Um, as a mossling, oh no, I think that's a Woodgrew thing. Yeah, w Woodgrew is a, a, my backup character. He can do something with um, uh, woodwinds, but um, uh, yeah. So I would, um, uh, yeah, come in and uh, take. And there was there was nothing descript in the hallway that leads to his room. That no, no, shaped. just tile. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So those are just okay. connecting passageways. So the the Sorwello is there, and he he he's actually at the ready now. So he's in the um uh what do you call it a. Uh, uh, re, uh, not reclining, but a sitting, like a sitting cat, right? Like he's back on his haunches with his front legs steady. And he's sort of, you know, anxiously waiting. He's like, I'm, I'm very ready to hear your beautiful music, Mr. Mosforo. Uh, I will do my best. And uh, yeah, he'll, he'll walk over to uh, the cellos. Are, are there any differences between the three cellos? Or are they all the same? There are slight differences. Yeah, the faces that are, so every instrument has a face carved in it. So the faces okay. are different and differently expressive, and the cellos themselves are of, um, uh, they're um, not a different wood, but uh, you can see like the grain is different in each of them. You're right, like they're all unique. Okay, um, but no nothing that sets one apart from the other. You can you can okay. just is there yeah. is there a sm uh, happy one? Sure, like a smiling yeah. face. Yeah, I'll Absolutely. take the smiling face one. Okay, so when you approach the cello, Grimo, uh, the face actually animates, and it's smiling. But you can see its eyes sort of roll up and sort of gaze at you and sort of look at you happily. Oh, this and, um, is disturbing. And, and when you sort of grasp the neck of the cello um, in an attempt to start to get ready to play it, it uh, the face animates and it looks at you and it smiles and it nods approvingly. Uh, I, I, I nod back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I usually feel a kinship to the instruments that I play. This is taking it the next step. Um, it likes you, Master Mosfro. It knows a musician when it sees one. It approves of you. This is nice. Uh, hopefully I can bring forth a song that will please you and please everyone. Hmm? I have no doubt about it. Play on, musician. Play on. Uh, tune it a little bit, and uh, yeah, I will begin to play. Okay. So you play, and uh, you, uh, uh, you produce a, a lovely song, and... Uh, 
a little chamber music for the, Sir Wello. You guys are also equally impressed. Sir Wello sort of sways to the music a little bit. Um, he seems to be thoroughly entranced by it. If, if you wanted to get the jump on him, uh, Mr. Bloodthirsty Friar, now's the time. <laughs> <There. laughs> I joke, John, I joke. <laughs> <laughs> However, this is what occurs. <clears throat> As the, so as the song winds down, uh, uh, Grima, what kind of armor are you wearing? Uh oh uh, Everyone tell me what kind of armor. Well, I guess it would just be Glance Askew and Grima. Uh, I'm wearing bark armor. Okay. Uh, Glance Askew is wearing uh, what we call a necklace of honeybees. <laughs> no armor? <laughs> oh, no. I'm a, I'm a magician. Okay. Um, and can you tell me what weapons you have? I have no weapon. I have a stick. Okay. Uh, I have the the dream long sword um, uh -huh. and a short sword and a sling. Okay. Friar? Uh, I have a quarter staff, and I would have changed back into my smoking jacket and pants when I went after I got through the cauldron. So I am less than armored, John. I should have tracked attract weapons <laughs> so you don't have any weapons i have a quarter, quarter staff, staff. Yeah. Me too. quarter staff okay yeah. cool so grimo i guess it's only you so as you're playing and uh, uh you can feel that you seem to be as you try to move a little bit as you try to take a step forward at one point you find that you could take the step but something is like holding you back from actually being able to do it it freezes and you, armor and you, you look down and you're like the next room you twist at your waist and you're like, what the heck? And you can see like the scabbard where your long sword has been placed. It's not moving. And you're like, ah, and you're like, what the heck? Yep. We can walk. Yeah. We can play that in the next room and we can get through there. Uh... And then for about, like you would say, probably around like 30 seconds or so after the song ends, that effect wears off. And Sir Wello sort of opens his eyes and he says, that was wonderful, Master Mosfero. You are truly a gifted musician. Feel free to come back any time to, to, uh, to, to, to play me another lullaby. Is, uh, is it possible? I, I mean, I feel like I have a real kinship with this beautiful instrument. May, uh, may we make some sort of uh, bargain for it? It's just so beautiful. I hate to leave it. I wish I could, for in your hands it has never been played uh, more skillfully, but these instruments are the property of the Duke. I have no say over them, but they, I fear that he would be most angry should, that be, should this be taken out of the realm of dream. Oh, and I would never, never think of taking it without permission, which is why I asked if some bargain could be struck. You would have to bargain with the Duke himself. I am not allowed to make such calls. Mm. Maybe he will be in a good mood when we return his cauldron to him. Hmm? This is quite likely. Perhaps you could play a serenade for the guardians in the next room. They must be very bored mm. standing there all the time. I, I would love to. Would this be possible? Uh, this is your realm. I would love to. We saw him. He seemed sad. There was a little tear. Perhaps this could cheer him up. Merely an engraving, an effect upon the visor. The guardian, unfortunately, I have no control over. I can tell the statue, the the uh, the um, suits of armor that that flank the um <laughs> flank the door to stand aside. However, the guardian has a sacred duty to guard entrance to the cauldron of riches. Of course, so he cannot. He can never leave, and he must be um, sad that he never leaves. So perhaps uh, Master Moss Furrow could play for him. All, all that would be necessary is to open the door so he could hear. I can play right here. You guys, yeah, that, that, that's that's you guys. You don't have to get permission. Okay, I'll go open the door. He's just saying that you you could take. What he's saying is that you can take the cello and sort of move around this space. Right. But he's saying that you're probably yeah. going to get in trouble if you take it out of the cauldron. That's fine. Yeah, oh, okay. Would, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. will. I will borrow this. It is. I will not leave with it if that is okay. Okay. Yeah. We right back. So he's very. He's very pleased. He's totally chill. You guys are are not acting chaotically. So he's very happy. Okay. I will. I will conjure him a treat as well. Oh, um, delicious for you, good mm. sir. 
I always old. appreciated the the frosted delights of the elven kind. You've Such a, a treat. You've and, been a and marvelous John, host too. <laughs> <laughs> now you're a ghost elf. <laughs> <laughs> I do apologize for my. I do wish this was like more friend. of a campaign so we could see everyone's voices evolve over time. You know, it's good stuff. Okay, John. Well, so, while uh, we're playing, like in this room, if we look in the mirrors, is anything like weird going on? If we look into yeah. the mirrors. Okay, so you're going to look into the mirrors, are you? Oh, now we've done it. Oh, uh, now we're dead. Okay, so Grimo, you you look upon your what you deem to be a, a fantastically handsome visage. Um, uh, in the mirror, and you do you do see yourself. However, what you see is not what your friends see. You see a very vividly covered with bright green parsley chest hair, mossling in the mirror. However, the edges of the, of your form appear to be hazy and indistinct. And in fact, everything that is reflected in the mirror behind you in the background. Uh, like all of the, you know, all of the instruments and the tiles and the, probably part of the manticore itself appears to be rather desaturated yet vividly sharp. What does the manticore look like in that mirror? That's right. Same thing. That's what I just said. Like it, it looks desaturated, but vividly sharp. So it flips. It flips. You're looking right. through the mirror and whatever right. is dreamlike here is solid there. Well, mm -hmm. what I was wondering was whether if it shows things like the opposite as to what they are and to him he looked to us he looks like a manticore but in the mirror he might look like something else because he's not really a manticore or something no like he's, he's definitely a manticore but uh, but he appears real but desaturated in the mirror right. <clears throat> is he still on mm -hmm. yeah nothing's changed it's just okay. he's now desaturated but hard-edged um i i just with my finger i like tap the surface of the mirror it taps like real, like like real glass. The only thing different than the um, the obvious magical effect of what you're looking at through the mirror is that it it seems to exude a slight silvery radiance from it. Um, and don't forget too that around the edges you're seeing like the slow drip of tears. One of the tears and see what happens. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna drink one of the tears. You want to drink one? Yeah. Okay, so nothing seems to happen. Tastes no. salty, like a real tear. Okay. Cool. Huh. All right. Should Dead. we? <laughs> you can you can easily collect tears here though with a decanter if you like. Ooh. Should we get some more tears? Hey, tears are tears, I guess. Right? We might need them. I, I worry about diluting the others, but. What do we have? A, do we have another container? We could just put them in. Another, if we're worried about mixing, we could. Just well, but you know what? Thing. That decanter might be needed to keep the properties of the tears. Yeah. I I, I don't think we have to worry about diluting the tears because. I think we um, used it for the thing we needed it for, right? Maybe. And you still have two oh, two doses left in that one. Yeah. Yeah. I think maybe. you use it. Um, I think you use it, Matt, to retrieve the things from the cauldron. Yeah. I think we have to. Here, here's here's my hypothesis. We use the silver thing to find the thing that we want to grab. We use the tear to turn it into something real, and then we retrieve it. Right. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking, exactly. That I think we need that at least one tier for our map. And then and maybe something we need to roll four mm -hmm. tiers into the pot, like not just like, one. Or maybe I'd put the decanter down underwater and then open it, you know, inside that thing. Yeah, I don't know. So or if your theory is you, correct, you could change two things with the tiers that you have right now. Yeah, Do you so want to collect more? Assuming it doesn't um, dilute somehow, <laughs> yes. That's what we want to do, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, sure. Let's, okay, we can gather some more. Okay. If, so uh, uh, they're they're flowing very very slowly, and you if you're determined to only capture them in the decanter, that means it's going to take a little bit of time. So what I'm going to say is is that for every tier that you want to collect, actually no, I'll say like because they're kind of running equidistant from either side of the frame, right? That you can collect two at a t two tiers per turn. How many tiers would you like to collect? Let's spend three turns, guys. Okay, that right. sounds fine. Three turns? Okay, so mark down that you now have a total of eight teardrops in your decanter. Okay. Got that it. seems like a pretty good haul if we can if we can get stuff out of there. And it gives us a little margin for error if we mess it up, right? Like, yeah. I think silver spoon to select, Pewter. copper spoon to make it interactable. Dive in, get it, come yeah. out, and then How do you make come it out. How do you get back, though? No, we'll find out. Well, I'm hoping we'll figure we can it out. We're, we're very clever. 
Make it make okay. that map real and then reach in and grab it is what I'm thinking. Yeah, that's but, okay. Let's try it. Okay, that. so to get to get back to the cauldron of riches, your plan is to enter this room and attempt to uh somehow get past the guardian. Is that right? I just want to make yeah, sure so your your next path is to go into the north. By right? freezing their armor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So this is that's great. We'll, we'll let's let's take another uh last break. Um and then we'll pick it up with your final approach to the cauldron of riches and see how it goes. We will be right back. We are back in. Mike decided to screw up the reintro by inserting his eye. Thanks, Mike. That's okay. We'll leave it. It's not a screw up, John. I'm 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 rough. I'm like I'm like real. You're right. Just right. My food. This is a uh, uh, cinema verite, as they say. Right. It's a, del a deliberate choice. In a okay, world of so crisp Xeroxes, Mike is a ditto. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But I'm <laughs> that's, <angry>. that's epic. <laughs> that's all time quotable right there. Okay, so um, you guys are uh, sitting in the Manticore's lair. Um, he's he's fat and happy and and lulled a little bit by Grimo's lovely playing. And you guys have determined to face the giant twelve foot armored guardian in the other room. So you're at that door to the north. What do you do? It has a Bregel a black a brass plaque with a um, a Bregel face on it. So I think, guys, as soon as uh, just as soon as you open the door, I'll start playing that. Uh, I'll start playing that cello. Yeah. Okay. I, and I don't think you have anything that holds you back, right? No, but I'm also not super eager to run in there and get tricked and get killed. You know, I got to say we do have another way to get back there. Well, but you'll have to go through the kitchen well, and I'll and which might kill uh, uh, Glances Cube. Every time well, Fire, you were the one that actually determined when you first entered that room from the west that the guardian didn't seem to respond to you until you actually physically stepped into the room. Right. right. So, so you can certainly I, open the door and, and like view things, you know, or get assess things. I think we should. Yeah. And if I if I'm playing, you know, he starts to move as soon as you go in. So if I'm already playing, if he's unable to move, you'll know right away. Yeah. Just the cello is not a very mobile instrument, man. You can't play it and move a cello. I am very <laughs> nimble. Also, the, the effect lasts about 30 seconds. So while I'm yeah, playing, you can't move. You okay. guys can go. And then when I'm okay. done, it lasts about 30 seconds before. All right, Grimo. So you can, you can clearly hear on the other side of the door, you can hear the, the sentry like uh, pacing of the <laughs> from the room. So do you open the door? Well, before we do... Let me uh, take off my armor and weapons so that I can uh, uh, move. Yeah, because he'll be able to move when I can move. And well, your armor both... doesn't seem to, to impede you whenever you played because you're wearing bark armor. Oh, it was just, just, it was the, just the, the weapons. It was the sword. It was the long sword that kept, that kept you back. Okay, so what I'm going to do is... Uh, I'll, I'll hand it to you so we can start playing, but uh, I'll keep playing. You take my uh, my weapons and throw them to the other door, right? So we can just like because it, it's just a, across the room. I'll just there. carry them. I'll just carry them. It's fine. You won't you won't be able to move with we'll them. Move with them. But why do we even need them? It's a dream sword you can't keep anyway. Unless we put uh, a, a teardrop on it. Oh. Okay. Well, I'll I'll leave I'll leave my um. Oh, I'll, but I'll leave my, I'll, I'll go ahead and leave my short sword and my sling here. Do uh, you think it's a metal thing or a weapon thing? I think it's a, a weapon thing because I felt my scabbard holding me back, which had the short sword. No, I, I think it's a metal thing. Your, he said your moss bark armor didn't hold you back because it was. No. That's correct. Moss bark. I think it's a metal thing, Matt. I don't think it's a weapon thing. Yeah, he said your sword. Uh, well, that's your sword. I, that's I fine. I mean, I'll. Sword. Keep, keep the sling. Okay. Okay. So who has okay. who has the sword? So is the uh, sword immobilized, or is the sword just frozen? I'm I guess I'm misunderstanding that. No, you... Nothing is immobilized now. Everything's fine right now. No, I know. But, but when, when, I, when playing, I was playing, yeah, he could. The sword was not moving at all in the scabbard. It was like frozen in air. Yeah, mm -hmm. frozen in space. Can you stand up and move with it, or is it just like no? Only as far as like his scabbard would allow him to, right? That's why oh, I was saying like he could turn, he could make it take a step, but so even if he you was basically could... your backpack, you'd be frozen in place while you're that's... running in place with the backpack right. on. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And so he and I, if I have the weapon on me, he and I will be free at exactly would, the same time. I would say so. just leave it, leave it here, dude. Yeah, yeah I'm not planning on we'll fighting anything. Yeah. Okay. okay so, so who are you leaving it on the ground then? Yeah, yeah, I'll just leave my my short sword on the ground, and I just have okay. any. Can you open the door? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Okay. So you open the door and you can see exactly what you thought from this end, but you're just seeing it from a different angle. We'll say that the guardian is actually in the middle of the room, but it is stalking towards you, not with intent, but that just appears to be the path that it's on right now. In addition, the normal sized knights are flanking that door, but their glaives are at rest. Uh, you know, like the, the doorway is free basically, but they are okay. setting up okay. the other end. All right. Okay. Uh, um, and as Fire Jim saw before he was yanked back through that room, uh, last session um, on the western door is um, the uh, a brass plaque that is shaped like a cauldron. Right. Cool. Okay, so it's like it's, so this thing is like <laughs> walk. It doesn't seem to be aware of you. You can see the single tier, right? That sort of thing, and it's got that huge great sword, which has not been unsheathed. It's at its side in a scabbard. All right. Okay. Um, do your thing, I man. Will, yeah, I will start. I will start playing the cello again. Okay, so you start again, and as you start playing in the doorway, still in the um, in the Manticore's lair, uh, you the the armor the suit of armor immediately just goes and stops. Yes, just completely. You can see like a little bit of like you know attempt to move forward, but no voice obviously coming from it, but just like that, just you know. Book it, book it, stop moving. Yeah. I'll keep playing. Do you guys want to just like look through the room? We've already I mean, got this. I'm, like I'm a professional, here, right? He's a professional. What are the, all, the, all those paintings. Uh, sure. Well, let's go look at the paintings. Okay. So you walk into the room, and um, as the strains of Grimo's cello playing uh, roll over you, and as I said before, wood paneled walls, dozens of portraits. Oil paintings in gilded uh, frames, all uh, each one depicting the Duke of Cherish's dreams in weird places. And yeah, it's candlelit by giant iron candelabras hung from the ceiling. I guess if those candelabras were slightly swaying, they are no longer swaying. <laughs> oh, okay. interesting. Uh, are any of the pictures of note, John? Like any of the scenes of note? Anything that. Uh, the ones that are depicted here, as I said before, um, one, he's perched on the prow of a rainbow huge ship. One, he's bathing in an oyster shell, posing with a blue hound. And one, he's engaged in a tense game of chess with a fur-clad woman who uh, you have determined was likely Igraine, the sorceress of Chateau Mauves. No new ones. We saw those ones from the doorway, I think. Yes, yeah, yeah. Nothing new. Yeah, they okay, all appear cool. to be. And they're not animated. Like, they're, they're paintings. They're oil paintings. Okay. Well, let's Do you want to, like, peek, peek behind any of them? I'm, I'm going to, sure, I'll, I'll peek behind the painting of uh, Egrain. Okay, you don't see anything, but as you have taken a little bit of time to look at the paintings and kind of search around them, this is both uh, the elf and the friar, um, you can see the, uh, the, the armored knight, despite the fact that Grimo is still playing, starts to you can see signs that it's 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 motion is coming, its, it's ability to move is coming back. Well, oh, shit. run, yeah. run, <laughs> book it, <laughs> book it to let's, the western yeah. door, and, yeah, and make sure Grimo the... knows too. Like, yeah. yell it out. Okay, so uh, it it's fine. So luckily, the door doesn't have a lock. So you all like race as fast as you can through there. And of course, it's just a nick of time sort of thing. Like the moment that you close the door behind you is when the uh, knight manages to. Um, become fully mobile once again. And you could hear behind you the sound of the metal glaives shink, like crossing over the door behind you, but you can't see it because you've closed the door. All right, and uh, well done. So you have avoided the, the guardian and you have made your way back into the uh, cauldron of riches. Uh, John, I would have dragged the cello with me if that's possible. Uh, yeah, you could, yeah. Cellos aren't that heavy, right? Like, you, you know, you. Yeah. Hollow yeah, wood. Plus, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a musician. I know how to do this. Uh, you're yeah. a mossling. It's wood. Okay, so you have made it back into that room. Um, it hasn't been that long, but you remember that you have, uh, you've um, actually, uh, Friar Giles was there just a few minutes ago at ceiling tapestries. Yeah. <laughs> um, so bronze tiled floor, and. All right. You've got your dome ceiling and the black cauldron there. Yep. And yes, the pewter rod is lying against the side. We're going to use the pewter rod to find the map. John? Right. Okay. So you, you go over and you stir the rod. It takes you, um, uh, you know, you have to stir it a bunch of times. It's the very last scene that kind of hits. But yes, indeed, there's the ship's cabin. You see the rolled map. There is also a bottle, a paint. I'm sorry, a uh, pot of paint that is next to the rolled up map on the... the um, in the cabin's uh, desk. 
Okay, I have a question, guys. Let me. Uh, so first of all, if we put the copper rod in, it, it might just take us to that place, not uh -huh. take something out of that place. Yeah. Um, when we teleported via the cauldron pri previously, and we arrived in the bedroom room. There was no way back. There we didn't. There wasn't like a portal behind us or anything, was there, John? No, it was a, a transportation. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't Why don't that we? Was a re, I, that was a place here. Like I almost feel like I'm wondering if we can just reach in and grab something. I think mean, I think I think we're still okay, Ted. I don't think we have to necessarily go all the way through. Right. right. Okay. So I just, it, it, if we do, let's just dangle one. We can put one person on a rope. We'll do, I don't think we should all go in. Just one person on a rope yeah. down there, and then we'll mission impossible them in and out. The other thing I was going to suggest is, weren't we able to stir the scene enough to come back to the opening hallway? Yes. Or am I misremembering that? Yeah, so it would take so one more stir. We could ex we could um, experiment with Grimo's hat, which is lying in the middle of the room now, and seeing if we can retrieve that using one of the tears. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, the... Uh, that that that's the other cauldron, not not this one. Okay, Never that's mind. places. This is treasure. I mean, my hat is a treasure, but oh, but I thought we were able to see the front hall somewhere from this room. Yeah, but that's the, tapest tapestry. the tapestry. The tapestry. The tapestry. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. tapestry. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So the the rooms that, or the places that we cycled through on this one. None of them were in this cauldron. They were no. All they all outside. seem to be for, foreign places that you've never foreign. been to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's try. Uh, it. I'm down to try this. Let's try this. Come on. Otherwise, right, okay. we're going to be sitting here paralyzed with indecision for the rest of the I'll night. I'll take the copper rod uh -huh. once we're on the room with the map, uh -huh. with the moon map. Uh -huh. and I'll, I'll just, I'll just touch the water to start with, and just see. What okay, happens. when you when you touch the water, the the same silvery effervescence uh, arises out of it. Everything turns like very, um, you know, bright with colorful motes that sort of emit from the top of the cauldron. All right, then I'll hand the rod to someone else, uh, Mike, I guess, because mm -hmm. this has a cello. And I will attempt to reach in and see what, like, can I what reach? We, let's let's, let's tie a rope okay. around you. Tie a rope around you first, just in case you've, like, fallen in. The yeah. So I, 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 I know the rope okay. okay. So I'm going to say, if you want to tie a rope, it's going to take a turn. Um, okay. Fine. And, rope. and uh, yeah, so you just touch the water a little bit with your hand glances, skew, and the two of you, the rest of you, see him instantly disappear. Um, the moment that he disappears, the silvery moat, the the colorful moats uh, also die down, and it just becomes like the normal color, similar to the other the way that the other one worked. Glance at Skew, you are now find yourself in that ship's cabin. As Friar Gimes and Grimo, as you look into the cauldron, you can see Glance at Skew, small in that cabin, moving around. Like Mike Glance at Skew, as you are there. In this ship's cabin, it's very, very strange. You would assume that you would feel slight rollicking, you know, like a movement of the waves. However, you don't. You also don't hear waves on the outside. There is no exit out of the cabin. Yeah, it's into the rest of the, into the rest of the ship. However, there it, it's it's the ship's cabin, like the captain's cabin. So it's it's in the what's the back of the ship called? Stern. The aft. The stern. The stern. The stern. Yeah. There is that bank of like windows that would look out the back yeah. of the ship. Yeah, and. Out of that bank of, uh, out of those windows, you see a black field that is dotted with white pinpoints of light everywhere. In space. And, is, and you, space. you've never seen anything like it except whenever you peer into the night. There's two places where you've seen that when you've peered into the night sky and when you peered into the depths of the dark mirror. Um, right. Um, so, um, but everything's very, very quiet. Very, very quiet. Here. Yes. There, yes, there's a rolled up road. map. You guys yeah. want to go play spell jammer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take the map. Uh, is there like a map case or a, an envelope or something to put it in or anything like that? Or is it just there? A, there is not actually. It's it's rolled up, um, right. tied tied with a piece of string, and there is next to it there is a a, a definitely like a small little pot, um, almost like an ink vial of paint. Just take that too. Um, when I see that he's got them, I'm looking into the top of the cauldron, John. When mm -hmm. I see that he's got them, I'm going to reach the copper or paddle stir thing back into mm -hmm. the water and see if maybe that creates a, a portal for him to 
to come back through. Jump or out. Okay. Oh yeah, and what, what what happened so, to our rope that was tied to him? Did it like? It's still there, so it's draping in. But there's like a little bit of a disconnect, right? Like the the rope goes into the water, but then it's sort of like cut off, and then you can see like a smaller version of that rope still tied to Ted. Uh, to still tied to Glantis Q within the scene, within the thing. Um, um, and Ted, from your view, the rope sort of goes up into the air, but before it hits the ceiling of the cabin, it's just sort of dissipates into thin air, right? right. Now, yeah. the moment that Friar Gimes puts the copper rod in, the colorful motes emit from the cauldron and all that kind of stuff. And indeed, right where your rope is uh, ending in the air, Glantis Q, a portal opens up and you can oh. vaguely see vaguely see the faces of your two companions peering into a, what appears to be a round opening i want i'll take the map i'll put the roll in my in my robes mm -hmm. i'll take the paint i'll write crump was here <laughs> <laughs> the cork in that put it in my pocket and i'll uh, i'll wave at the portal and then mime pulling the rope okay uh, okay. Grimo, you better Let's, do that because yeah. I don't have a whole lot of strength. Kind of <laughs> oh, I'm incredibly and very, very strong. Do not worry about this. That's too he's much exaggerating. time. Exaggerating. Yeah, he's not that strong. Uh, he's stronger than you. Uh, he's got a strength of eleven. So, you know. So, yeah. Lance, excuse you, when you make an effort to actually sort of reach that portal, uh, you seem to right. defy gravity a little bit, and you you basically <laughs> float up into the portal and uh, arrive back into the cauldron chamber. Now, um, I should say that before you leave, as you will say, like the last thing you do when you glance askew uh, back towards the uh, <laughs> into the cabin, what what? There is a um, uh, you notice that the the message that you wrote with the paint, uh, which was what, glance askew was here. here. Crump is, Crump, here. Crump is here. Crump is here. Um, it actually seems to um, uh, have formed a solid brick of letters. Like instead of like it being painted on onto the, um, it has formed. It has transformed your handwriting into like professionally ty like professional typography, right? You know, you know what I mean. So it's, okay. it's translated your handwriting into something that looks professional, and it is but actually solid, right? but solid, almost like a kid's blocks uh, uh, of letters on the on the uh, on the table itself. <laughs> oh, these right. are like those those magic paints you can paint real stuff with it. Yeah. 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 But more importantly, glance askew as you as you alight gracefully on the ground uh, next to the cauldron, um, you the rest of you can see poking out from his jacket an actual dream, a person's dream of a map of the moon. Let's Which put we down, down tears on it. Put tears on it so we can take it out of the cauldron. Yep. Right. Do you and do because that? It, and, yeah, and it's like that. it's like fuzzy, yeah. right? Like it's not mm -hmm. real. It is, yeah. It's definitely a dream. Okay. Yeah, let's put a drop a on it. Okay. So mark off a tear off of your decanter. And as you do so, exactly what you think happens. It it, it desaturates but becomes very, very real. All right, uh, guys, what else do we want to loot? <laughs> uh, <let's, laughs> I want John, what, Congratulations. About those, what about the paints? Are they dreamlike too? Do we need to put a drop they on are, those? They too? are dreamlike. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, def that's definitely worth it, guys. You can paint anything you want and it becomes real. Now, the thing about that, though, Matt, is you might need to paint it first and then turn that thing into a real thing. No, no, no. You, you just might ruin the, the magic. By, you might ruin the magic by turning the. Okay. Trust me, man. I know this. I know oh, this. Oh, you do? Guy. Do you? I, I, I feel it in my bardic soul. You, you rolled a 20 on your dolmen wood. <laughs> your bardic, you say. Uh, are you putting a drop uh, on the paints, Grimo? Uh, yeah. Okay. Same exact thing happened. So, desaturated, but um, but very real. So, okay, make sure you're marking what you have on your person that's real versus dream, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's keep mm -hmm. stirring and seeing what else loot, what other loot we can get. Yeah, out there, of. Were some, there were some good yeah. loot rooms that we saw when we were stirring before. Okay, so um, stirring, I'll, I'll give you the brief thing. So there's a vault that had two open chests that were overflowing with gold that had the coat of arms of House Gillifer on them. There was a study that had three arcane scrolls on a desk. Um, there was a chapel with three different, uh, very different looking vials um, and a bedchamber with an open jewelry box which uh, where there was um, silver and garnet necklaces that were overflowing from them. And lastly, besides the ship's cabin, there was an armory with racks of swords and spears, plus a quiver of uh, 12 arrows that appear to be made out of uh, pure sunlight. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. 
Guys, uh, for, which, for the, in, in the interest of time, the if you want to loot everything, you have the ability to do so. Would you like to take everything and just yes. flip this ratchet? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Have you met us? Have you met us, John? Okay, so I would say for the whole process that it would take. Um, uh, well, knowing how it works and knowing that you that you don't really need a rope, I would say that it would probably take a turn for each room. Okay. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. One, two, three, Unless four. It's going to be a century five. after we left when we finally come out again. In this case, we're... okay. So that puts us squarely at two p.m. in the real world. You only have three turns left on your lantern fire chimes, which okay. is last you most of the adventure. Okay. So this is what you get. Um, the uh, the chests. The, there's two chests, um, and it would probably take like two of you to go in there to kind of haul them out. Um, are filled with gold. There is a total of 2,000 gold pieces. Dream, <laughs> dream gold pieces. Oh, shit. Um, in those chests. The uh, the study yields three arcane scrolls. Glance askew when you look at them. You can determine that they are the following spells. Vapors of Dream, which I believe you already have access to. I have right? it. I have it. A, a Glyph of Locking. And a circle of invisibility. I know for a fact that those two are higher rank spells. I believe Glyph of Locking is second and Circle of Invisibility is third rank. However, um, similar to OSC rules, as long as it's on a scroll and you have the ability to cast arcane spells, you can cast those spells from yeah. the scroll. Nice. Um, the chapel uh, yields three vials. One of them is holy water. And let's see. The other... So I, I would say, Friar, you can immediately determine one's holy water. Okay. The other ones you're not too sure about. One is an oil, and it's a thin, iridescent black, and the odor coming from the vial is of mothballs, like cedar almost, right? Um, the other one is um, beautiful looking. It's actually um, it's in an oct octahedral glass. Right, so an eight-sided vial, basically, um, but inside the it's, uh, the liquid is pulsing and rainbow-hued, and it uh, it is odorless whenever you smell it. Okay, uh, and then keep moving on before you test those, if you want to, the jewelry box from the bedchamber has four silver and garnet necklaces. Each of them is worth three hundred gold. Dream, however, each necklace is a single item, right? Um, oh, so we can't put a drop on the box and get everything inside. No, unfortunately not. <laughs> the box would be real, but uh, unfortunately, each drop on each coin. I know it's a bummer. What? Um, but the neck, the necklaces, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the you can immediately tell when you're in the armory that the swords and spears are not only dreamlike but also sort of mundane, mm -hmm. right? So they're not usually they're not worth taking out. But the quiver you can take out, um, and mm. there are these. Um, these arrows, which uh, glance at skew, you can immediately tell they are pure sunlight, and you've heard tale of these, although you've never encountered them. That they are definitely um, uh, crafted; they are uh, of fairy make, not not just dream, but but of, made of fairy. Even if they were real, they would be made of made from we, fairy. We got to put one tier on each arrow. Uh, you would, yeah, if you want them to be real. How many arrows are in there? Uh, what did I say? Is it twenty? Like like a regular Twelve. Clipper? Twelve. Twelve. Mm -hmm. Guys, we got very, go very back. bright. Like they lit, they like they light up the room that you're in. We got, we got that seven tiers at this point, right? Hmm? We've got seven tiers left. A six. Yeah. We six. used one for one for the map, one for the paints, and then we have uh, six left. Well, that's, okay. So uh, we are we are a half hour from quitting time. I don't want to to hey, stop hey, you hey, from hey. from adventuring. You've you've um you've completed your goal. Like you've got the dream. Mm -hmm. All right. right. You can certainly explore more. There's there's more to do here, like you just did. Um, but uh, I just want to make you aware that we have about a half hour's worth of time to go. So feel free okay. if you think you if you want to test this stuff out or go test out the cauldron of um, places, you can. Whatever you want. Hmm. Did we? Did we? I can't remember when we were looking at the cauldron of places. Did we see every? Did we cycle through? You did everywhere? not because you didn't have the cycling rod. But now right? we you do. Did, we oh, you. now we do. Mm. That could be really fun, guys. What What if we, like, retrace? Like, we don't want to go through the kitchen because it'll kill the elf. But um, <laughs> why don't we just... <laughs> <laughs> Ted does not agree with that statement. <laughs> 
I also want to just point out that if we all were to jump in the cauldron and go somewhere fun and magical for vacation, a poor Crump is going to wake up eventually. And so that would be fun to just dump him in one of these random places. Just thinking about this. So we have two goals here, right? There are two goals, three, really. Number one, retrieve the dream, which we have done. We could literally walk out the front door and we're, and we're done. Right. Mm -hmm. Number two, bring the cauldron to, the um duke right which means probably that happens trans- outside yeah right transporting it outside that's number three and number three is loot the living shit out of everything that we can loot the shit out of right because we are told that we can have whatever we can take with us right so Very true. without pissing off the the manticore right so- right but he did reference the manticore did reference he's like when we when crump flipped over the uh, cauldron he's like you fools have you know destroyed the very object that could have made your fortunes or something along those lines right yeah. and he was like so i don't think he's going to give a shit so i say we haul as much stuff as we want over either to the mirror room where we can just put things underneath the mirrors and let the tears drip on them until they're real or Actually, that's what I'm saying we should do. We should do that, or we go back to the moon guy, and we can literally just put all of these treasures underneath the the, the different, you know, paintings or, or mirrors, let them all turn real, then leave, then take the cauldron with us, ask the manicure how we find the Duke of, uh, the Duke of, you know, loves Church to get dream. dreams. Yeah. <laughs> and then return the thing, dude, and then score. And sure. then yeah. we have to I'll, start I'll, negotiating I'll, with John for how much XP that we gain tonight. We'll roll over <laughs> to our AV club characters. <laughs> yes. Thank you, that John. Crazy. That's awesome. <laughs> Mike's just trying to steamroll all that past me. Yeah, you think, I don't think he noticed, Mike. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I made my bladder check. So what do you do? <laughs> Um, I mean, like you, like, you don't have to like you successfully basically completed. So uh, yeah, you don't have to like really plan sure anything. Just, that's what we should do. Okay, Let's so what do you do? Stuff underneath the mirrors as possible, and turn as many things real as possible. That doesn't piss off the manicure, and then let's bail. Okay, so you go. Okay, so you go back into the the manticore's lair. He's he's uh, he looks like he's kind of sleepy, like he's ready to take a nap, but he's very happy to see you. And um, um, he wonders uh, if Grimo is going to play him another tune. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would occupy. Yeah, I would definitely occupy him during this process. So it's easy enough. Okay. Um. Are you doing it with your own uh, instrument or with the ones that are provided in the room? Uh, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll use the uh, the ones that are in the room. Why not? Okay. So doing that, let me just take a Try look. this time? Or is that the okay. One Who has right? the pewter and copper rod? I've, I've still got the copper rod. I'll have the okay. pewter one. Both of oh, you, you cannot move at all <laughs> whenever Grimo starts... Uh, Starts uh, playing his music. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, so why don't you yes yeah, set set those down and do the the treasure stuff and we'll, well get let's away. get all the treasures in place first and then yeah. you start playing. Yeah, and we should also not take those rods with us. No. Yeah. The other thing is oh, that yeah. you would not be able to move the chests because they were filled with metal. Right. Oh, okay. Well, Ooh, I'll, I'll, we can't I'll, get them even into. Oh yeah, because of the armor room. guy. Yeah. 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 Oh, we, guys, you know what else with the with the if the uh, if the cello freezes all metal, the kitchen's safe. Kitchen is safe. Well, you could freeze a wooden the kitchen spoon. with your name on it. <laughs> a wooden spoon yeah. tells me then I just deserve to die. Well, a lot of those things were wooden. So be, be, oh, okay. be aware. Oh, shoot. Uh, Most of the ladles and spoons freezes. <laughs> Half the creatures or half the ladles. I mean, there's got to be a reduced right. chance. Sure. Of I'll, I'll give you a reduced chance of being hit. Yeah. Okay, do you want to? So, do you want to go Manticore room? I, I still think we just do the Manticore room. If it's not if it's not safe, it's gonna kill you. You you have been rolling poorly in that kitchen yeah, it's every true. But time. We can't bring the coins then, because they just won't travel through the armor room. Uh, rem- uh, yeah, but remember, I was gonna have to do it in the in the kitchen anyway, so it, we're stuck either place. I mean, unless the friar wants to to drag it through, because you've got I, I you've mean, got hit points to spare. Every bit of treasure that we have, right? Like the necklaces are metal, the um, everything but the map. So, like honestly, like the cello is a bit of a limiting factor here. We just gotta we gotta dare the kitchen. Like if if you make it through, Grimo. 
Well, I, I can make it through. I can fly o- you could over. Freeze the- it for me to get through, and then we make the friar drag the chest. And yeah. Why don't we tie a rope to the end of the handles on the chest? And, and then when the ah, freeze the old classic over, rope dragging it trick. Cool. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll, so fl- I'll fly over with the rope. Yeah, uh-huh. and then do the trick. Yeah. And we put all okay, the metal cool. stuff that we can't carry. We just put it into the chest or a bag. Okay. Yep. Go through Brilliant. under the under the influence of cello and then drag it all through after the utensils start waking up. Great. Okay, great. Uh, okay, so I'm going to say that uh, for all of you that, um, well, Grimo can probably avoid it because he could fly up. Friar and Glantis Q, um, I'm going to say that there is only a one in six chance that you will get thwacked. So I need each of you to <laughs> throw me a D6. Roll high or roll low, John? You don't want to roll a one. This this is where greed roll kills one, the... John. I rolled a one. <laughs> At least it was you. <laughs> oh. 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 Glad so you. close. So good. That was very, very good of you to uh, to uh, mention the fact that there, there would be a lesser chance. So, Fire Gimes, you take one hit point. I'm um, glad to skew. You will manage to dodge out of there. Grimo uh, skirts along the um, the ceiling, and you uh, quickly, as fa- fast as you can, you yank those chests into the um, dining room. Guys, I'm so stupid. I could have cast protection from evil on Ted, and then he could walk around wherever he wants, and all these automatons wouldn't be able to hit him. It may not actually be an t- automaton. So, so uh, okay. So you're you're in the dining table. It, that that plan worked. So you, all of your treasure is now in the dining dining room with the caterpillars. Okay. So let's just uh, we're gonna make our way down to the manicure room, John. Okay. All right. So once again, he's happy to see you. And Grimo, uh, again, are you playing the cello or are you playing your own instrument? Uh, okay, well, if the uh, metal stuff, we'll put the, put the metal stuff under the, put the chest under the place where it can gather tears so the okay. water can, or the tears can go all over the coins. Very Once interesting, the metal friend. Are, uh, are in place, I'll play for him a beautiful song. <laughs> Using the cello? Using the cello. Okay, cool. And I'll be anointing the coins, John, and just moving tears around to all the different bits and bobs on them. And, you know, obviously we're not going to be able to get all of them. That, that would take too long, I imagine. Yeah, yeah the uh, thing I is, also, so if you're playing the cello, uh, the the coins cannot move. Right. Right. So it's not like the tear is going to drip, like, all over the different coins. It's going to drip no, over. No, but I can drip it into my hand and I can splash different coins. Okay, okay. Yeah. You know, and if yeah. if it gets if it gets uh, onerous too, I can I can switch up. You know, it's a nice concert. You move from the cello to the regular violin. He liked my fiddle before. Okay, so he's he's very pleased. Uh, he he. Com- I'm not going to role play it, but he he totally understands like what you're doing, and uh, but is so enamored with the music that he doesn't really seem to care. And he did promise that uh, you know it, it, they were yours if you were clever enough to get them, and you did. So. What I'm going to say is, is that you spend as much time as you're willing to do without realizing that you're just not going to be able to get all the coins no matter what, unless you spend like an, I, uh, like a crazy amount of time here. I um, do want to get the magic sword. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to say is, is you can uh, whatever you want to turn real or dream back or forward, you, you can do. Um, so you just got to let me know about that, and then I'm going to say that you can. Um, I'm going to give. I'm going to say that you can get 200 of the gold. Sold. That's great. Generous, okay. John. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. I'll definitely take all three scrolls. Okay. So are we making all the treasure real, I'm assuming? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And okay. each of us gets a, a necklace, you know? Okay. Yeah. So everything except the remainder of the gold is now real. 200 of the gold is real. Perhaps uh-huh, a ha Sorello would like some gold. I... I appreciate the offer, but other than its lustrous beauty, I have no use for it. It is yours. Ooh. Trade it in for favors. Oh. It has been quite a delight. I do ask you, should you be able to access the cauldron in the future, to please pay me a visit? It gets quite lonely here, with only me and my my caterpillars. To... Well, we're going to take plan... you back to the Duke. We could yeah, leave you, you a goat. Should... Ah, uh, if you... That would be most Carefully. wonderful. Pack everything because you might get feel a little bit of a jostle, Mr. Wello. <laughs> Mr. Wello, um, by my itchy arse. Now remember, I have coarse language. I'm supposed to be saying coarse language like all the time. Oh, by okay. my itchy arse, do you have any way that we can get this cauldron to the Duke who cherishes dreams in in the waking world? 
Ah, that would take some cleverness on your part, for I know not where you are, where the cauldron lies right now, and I have no knowledge of the mortal world. But mm, from what the tales I've heard, uh, there are numerous ways to access the realms of fairy. You have but to find out where that road lies to Hypnagogia. Uh, I noticed that there is a, a beautiful oil painting of the um, sorceress Ygrain hanging in that room over there. Indeed. Um, we happen to be close to her castle. Would she be able to provide some sort of egress to Hypnagogia? Undoubtedly. All right. There are very few mortal beings in the wood that have more knowledge of fairy and more truck with fairy than the sorceress of grain. However, any dealings you have with her are usually have usually extol a a uh, a high price. And what if so be you wary. Think, gifted to do her. you think? Do yeah? Do you think she would like the painting? Undoubtedly, I'm sure she would. From what I have heard, that the, she and the Duke used to be very, very close, but of recently, I think there is a little bit of tension, although I know not the cause. So tread carefully. But yes, in answer to your question, she would definitely have the answers. We could would go by could... way of the cold prince's lands. No, thank Speak you. Speak not his name, <laughs> Glantiskew. <laughs> oh, you're ruining our good, uh, our welcome host here. Uh, uh, would it be rude if we were to take this painting to present to her, the, uh, the uh, nice lady? You may take a painting, of course. Nice. Let's, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. So we do the okay. same thing. We, we play the cello, go in and get the uh, painting and okay. make it real with the tears. I All right, so think, man, we just plan on giving her the cauldron. Let her sort it out. Maybe it'll yeah. feel the right. Well, if there's some tension, she may not want to. I, I think we like lead off with the painting to set up like good graces and just chat with her. Okay, All right, so gift. I don't want to be too much of a stickler since we are basically closing in on the end, and this is basically like a little, you know, just a showcase of the of the mod. Uh, so I don't want to be too particular about the uh, slots for all this treasure, but in general, do you feel like you've got the, the, the wherewithal to take it all out of here? I'm almost carrying um, nothing. And, yeah. and when it comes down to <clears> it, um, we also have a pack mule that we were provided with outside the cauldron. You do, but you would still have to, uh, comp, you know, get it out. Uh, what I'm saying is, is like, I think like the painting, whoever's carrying the painting, that that would have to be carried in two hands. Uh, okay. You know what I mean? I and mean, then we the can chest. reduce our movement all the way down till 10 until we get out of the cauldron, guys. So sure. yeah. I, I also have leave a, some mundane items in here if we need to. Yeah. And you can move um, the coins that are real into like a sack or a belt pouch because there's only 200 of them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Um, and you could leave the the chest if you want. I've got to. nine slots available. I've got I've got enough slots as well. But I'm curious: did the decanter become real when Tears entered it? Uh, no, the t the decanter did not. That's yeah, like we held it thing. under, yeah. like, and let it drip on the side of the decanter. Uh, no, it does not. Okay. This, yeah, oh. yeah, the decanter appears to be unique. Yeah, in that way. That is weird. Okay, so we yeah. then I will erase that from my slots, and I have more room. I'm also ditching the onions because I'm not okay. taking onions. Is there anything the of so uh, my, you're, so once you've got all your treasure and you've transformed it however you want, um, you are then going to attempt to go back out the way that you came, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. Now, it, when you move to go out, is there anything that you're taking back to the mortal world that is of fairy currently? No. No. Okay. So you're leaving no, everything that is fairy. You, you know, I think it might be since the the fairy the dream sword that we have is not special in any other way other than it's a dream sword no it's a magical I, sword i don't know no. it's mundane it was just it was mundane it didn't have any bonuses or anything other than yeah. it, i think we leave that because we can replace it with another one and now we have a, a dream sword in case we need oh the sword i woke up with is not magical i thought it was magical it, it's magical in that it's made out of dream okay never mind man cool yeah, yeah. leave it okay Okay, so you're not taking oh. the dream sword with you, right? No, I'll take. I want to take it. I just don't oh, want to turn it real. Gotcha. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna kind of test to that, see what happens to dream thing. Yeah, that seems kind of handy to have, maybe. You know. Okay, cool. So you um, so you're like, all right, this has been fun, and you uh, you say goodbye to Sir Willow, and you um, make your way out with all of your haul, including what you, what the sage wanted. Well done. And as you move back up that tunnel you find yourself transported and it sort of opens up into the quiet glade of the mortal world. And you can immediately tell when you step outside of the cauldron, the difference 
is is um, intense. Not only that, but um, you you uh, the the way that you so you kind of you see the glade and you sort of step out. But the moment that you all step out, you actually find yourself rising from sleep on the ground in front of the red caps cauldron oh. and you you wake up and you're like oh and you feel really relaxed and you kind of look around and you remember everything very clearly but you find that the time is completely different than what you anticipated it oh. is uh it is night like the dark of night okay sure. and you wake up and what you remember clearly actually um is you all had a shared dream where you all remember exiting the cauldron and dragging the cauldron or, or carrying it to the shores of the dark mirror, which is a, just a short little jaunt away. Right. And you just all remember, like you, you talk to each other, you know, and you kind of like, Oh, you, you had that dream too. Was it a dream? Was it something we saw in the cauldron? And you kind of collectively remember that, that no, that is not something that we remember seeing in the cauldron, but you all shared this dream of taking the cauldron to the dark mirror. And so we're the at the shore is, right now, right? You know, well, you're very close to the shore, like very okay. close, like with like a, like less than a half mile. Us? Like, do we still have the cauldron? The cauldron is there in front of you, indeed. Yeah, it's it's tipped over, glade. right? We're we're you, not in the glade where we started. You are in the glade. Life. You're in the glade, but it's nighttime. The cauldron is still there, but the way that you sort of exited the cauldron is actually as if you had been sleeping and you woke up. Okay. And you remember oh, so we're not physically in a different location. Nope, you're you're there. Okay. It's just nighttime. Okay. We okay. all did have a dream about having gone to the dark mirror. Yeah, you had a dream of dragging this cauldron to the dark mirror, but you are in the same place, just in a different time. Guys, a dream I like drag it down to the dark mirror. Like it was a message from the from the Duke who cherishes dreams or something, maybe. Perhaps. Yeah, let's do, do that. It. Swing that bad sure. boy up on our trusty mule Mort. Yep, and Mort, is, uh, Mort is there, hey. along with the shovels. Yeah, it doesn't All appear right. to have been disturbed. Mort is still there, and the um, the hole where you dug the cauldron out of that still has the mounds of dirt that you shoveled out and all that kind of stuff. But Mort's so not you put got your... like a long beard and like he's a ninety year old. No, that's a good question. Yeah, you don't know what day of uh, that it is nighttime right now, right? But um, but Mort still appears to be there. Um, what about? And so, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to ask, what about our loot? You, you, the loot is there. Okay. Yeah. So, so you wake up and it's sort of all arranged around you. I should have mentioned that. Yeah. Um, so you, you put the loot all up on the, on the, um, mule, I assume, along with the cauldron yep. and you make the short journey to the dark mirror. Now, um, at nighttime, it takes on a whole nother level of, of beauty and strangeness, right? Because as I said, no matter what time of day, it looks like at the night sky with twinkling lights. So at this point, um, it's, it's like you're, you're stopped with the beauty of it because as you approach the bank in the dark of night, the, uh, it looks like a perfect reflection of the night sky. So there's no difference between where the, the horizon of the lake is and the night sky. The lake is large enough that it, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it goes all the way to the horizon, right? That's um, cool. In certain directions. So it's, it's unbelievably beautiful. But in addition to that, you see across the water is the Chateau Moves towering over on the cliff, overlooking the water, right, on the west-hand side. And remember how I said, like, it always looked, no matter where the sun was, that it looked like a westering sun was always hitting it? Right. That's still occurring in the middle of night. So there is bright, like a sunset light that is basically illuminating the western side of the Chateau Moves and its violet, um, its violet stones. Right, so it's sort of like in a modern day where like all, all of our monuments are sort of lit from below, mm -hmm. you know, like the pyramids oh, cool, of Egypt yeah. and the Eiffel Tower. It has that sort of look to it, right? Um, sure. As a you know, like an icon is sort of glowing in the midst. Yeah. Now, as you uh, bring the cauldron uh, to the bank, the something uh, numerous things emerge on the waters themselves and approach, and they are beautiful. <laughs> Uh, ships that are shaped like swans that approach the shore and they are manned by uh, oarsmen who appear to be very strange looking as they approach and like as us. they uh, <laughs> as they that. come well glance askew you can immediately peg them for your own kind mm. they are uh, elven shall, in nature I shall greet them in the traditional manner in the high elvish language 
<laughs> they, they, Fancy lads. they they some of them come up to the shore and sort of just kind of ground the ships a little bit but they don't leave but the, you notice that they they welcome you they're like hail they hail fair, uh, fair creatures and you see that they do appear to be elves uh, strong and tall, uh, kind of glowing a little bit, but they each of them are a little bit different than glasses skew in the fact that they um, have small little antenna that sort of jut from their brow. Ah, ah just Art like the thou, image we saw. Yeah. Yeah. Art thou and the, the vassals of the duke who cherishes dreams? Indeed we are, fair creature. We serve the duke and our boats can take you to his realm. We should tell you that the duke for him. The Duke greatly desires the return of that of young Cauldron and wishes to shower you with rewards, for he has heard of your great deeds. However, we should mention, and one points languidly <laughs> over the back across the water to the Chateau Mauves, the uh -huh. sorceress who dwells beyond yon violet walls would also consider it a mighty gift and will look most kindly upon those who deliver it unto you. We can ferry you to either location what say you all right confab guys gathering <laughs> gather. <laughs> yeah, just a moment we want right. to talk about which I, shower I we, we want duke. 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 i vote duke duke i yeah, never we'll, trust we'll anyone named grain i've read my king arthur myths I don't <laughs> we'll give, <laughs> we, we, we have a lovely painting to give to her she can have the yeah. painting we'll you can have the, the painting duke. okay so you're gonna go take the cauldron to the duke yes indeed so so uh, this is known to so you have discovered the one of the way the one of the passages to one of the fairy realms. Hypnagogia is to take the swan ships that appear on the dark on the dark mirror at nighttime, and you can if you are able to convince the elven oarsmen, they will take you to Hypnagogia, and you have determined your fate in uh, a for you know a a hypothetical longer campaign of Dolmenwood. You would next step would be going to Hypnagogia, and that's the the decision you have made. And that is the end of the Red Caps Cauldron. So well done, guys! You did you did great. Um, you you found basically all the secrets and figured out all the puzzles, and uh, that was really really well done. So a really really nice job. John, what uh, really deadly thing did? Oh wait, we can save that for the detox. Huh? <laughs> Let's save. It for oh the no. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll wrap it up. So I hope everyone in, in enjoyed playing. I had a great time running. It was really, really fun. Oh, this so, was awesome. Um, Thank you, John. Yeah. So good. And, uh, and I hope and everyone out there. Say, hmm? It was, it was hilarious. <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah. <laughs> I had a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Heavy on the whimsy, but, but thoroughly enjoyable. All yeah. uh, mostly thanks to the awesome characters that you guys made and portrayed. So thanks for that. And I hope everyone out there had a really great time seeing this little sneak preview of what's in store for us in um in the upcoming game and of course this was sort of a self-contained uh little snapshot and it takes place in an extra dimensional realm so it really is not indicative of everything that doma would has to offer um but uh it does give you the the heavy whimsy side of how you can kind of turn that knob all the way up to 11. um it gives you <laughs> that, that little taste so um, I'm looking forward to seeing the final form in the Dolmenwood campaign book as one of the three books in the set that's coming out in 2024, and I hope everyone out there is excited as well. So please do not forget, if you've enjoyed this, to like and subscribe, and don't forget that we have a Patreon that you can sign up for, get lots of cool benefits, join our Discord server, which is free to join, and to check out our first publication, Feats of Exploration, which is a cool subsystem for awarding XP that you can drop into any old school game with ease. So please go check that out on drive through rpg and itch.io there are links for everything down below including a link to gavin's official domenwood site where you can find out more about the game and we will be returning to the halls of arden after this and it's going to be something else <laughs> when we pick things up a true test of everyone's <laughs> skill um, and i hope you're all excited for that and until next time have a great week everybody take care bye bye